Welcome back to the 2018 Fusion Realtors Community First National Bank Open. C squad qualifying underway, game one of six. We had A squad and B squad already today. On A squad, we had 44 bowlers take to the lanes. And on B squad today, we had 64 bowlers take to the lanes. Tonight, I do have my squad list in front of me. We have a total of 72 bowlers here tonight. And all pins do carry over for tomorrow's cut. It's a one and three that they take to tomorrow. Joe Inglekiss will let us know exactly how many bowlers he is going to be taking. Uh, on the flyer it says 68, but uh, he's working on how he's gonna figure that out with the amount of bowlers that showed up for this year's event. This would not be possible without Fusion Realtors and Community First National Bank, the two title sponsors of this event. Also other sponsors contributing to the success of the prize fund and the support of the bowlers are Ebonite, makers of the Verdict Pearl and the Game Breaker 3 amongst the full product line of bowling balls. When you consider your next bowling ball purchase, make sure you consider an Ebonite product. Couldn't do it without the Waterloo Convention and Visitors Bureau as well. The Waterloo Convention and Visitors Bureau brings bowlers in from all over, fill up some hotel rooms, and they help support this event as well. And thank you to them for continuing to support the two fusions every year that they have here. Budweiser has been a supporter as well. Kingpin Grill, CFNB Mortgage, the Isle Hotel and Casino. When I come here to stay, that's where I stay. And Logo Infusion. And Logo Infusion is running a very special promotion this weekend. You can save 20% with the coupon code GIBA18. That's GIBA18 over at logoinfusion.com to save 20% off of jerseys. The oil pattern that everyone's been bowling on thus far is 38 feet in length, 28.53 milliliters of oil. It's a 2.12 to 1 oil ratio, which is very, very flat. And that's all taking place. You may see a venue change. We were at Maple Lanes for the last quite a few fusions, actually. And we've made it back to Cadillac XBC, formerly known as Cadillac Lanes. And you see the Pro Anvil synthetic surface, much slicker than what we see over at Maple Lanes. I am Mike Flanagan from InsideBowling.com, and we have started our new merchandise store on our website. And you see down on the bottom left of your screen that you can save 15% by using the coupon code YouTube, and that is going to live on forever. So if you're watching this broadcast archived on YouTube in the year 2538, uh, and I've been dead for 400 years, uh, you'll still be able to use the coupon code as long as the uh, website's still up. So uh, remember me nicely when you watch it much later in life. And with all that out of the way, as we get going here on the C-Squad, I am joined in the booth by one of my favorites, someone who has a lot of knowledge of this building today and this oil pattern. He bowled A-Squad and B-Squad. He bowled A-Squad at 80 over and bowled B-Squad at 79 over. And I told him if he would bowl C-Squad tonight, he would bowl 78 over. So he decided to join me in the booth instead. And now I can finally welcome in Tom Hess. Hello, Tom. Hi, Mike. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I told you I had a lot of things I had to say. <laughs> That's all right. You're good at it. So uh, so let's talk about, I guess let's talk about this oil pattern. What What did you see? And uh, as, we, as we start out down here on lanes, uh, 21 and 22 we've got our bowlers down here what what are you seeing uh from from not only watching them bowl but from what you saw earlier today i know you said that there was a difference for you with the crosses so well i i think the lanes broke down quite a bit quicker um on the second squad the first squad this morning because of the lower entries we only had three guys on a pair um i played out the whole day through through a fierce phobia all six games. Um, disappointed with the finish, but it is what it is. We're over it. I thought they changed quite a bit. Um, I think the fact that a lot of the guys from B squad came in and watched where, I'm, I'm just going to say it, where I was playing because when they were watching, I was 140 over and I was whacking them and I had, I had a lot. I think a lot of people saw what I had on the gutter. So a lot of people started out on the gutter on B squad and 
A lot of college players on that squad. And they, uh, a lot of the college players like to use urethane. And I think that really changed them. Um, just made it, made, made it very, very touchy on the gutter. Um, being the great player that I am, I tried to stay out there a little bit too long and tried to just out bowl what wasn't there. Um, was following some, some pretty good players from Wisconsin and noticed that most of them were inside. They were all ahead of me, so I made the jump left the last two games, went 20 over, 27 over the last two. So it is what it is, in a good spot, 80 over, gonna get to bowl tomorrow. Just got a little more work to do tomorrow. We're watching lanes 21 and 22, and down here on 21 and 2, we have Brennan Haw, Taylor Comer, Josh Gelfie, and Nick Wetzel. We also have lanes 15 and 16 for you. Roger Taylor Jr., Todd Turhune, Jim Howard, and Dwayne Kiltz. And I will bring in the picture in picture so everybody can, can watch how these lanes are developing during game number one. I also do want to take you through the bowlers that are bowling. Um, I can tell you that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 re-entries, which is, which is different for this tournament, Tom. Normally they don't take re-entries, but because of some other competing events in the Midwest and having to move this event for state tournament, women's state, um, Little, little low on entries this time, which is unusual. Yeah. It, Joe has to do what he has to do to get the entries, so it's, it's okay. Um, nice that he did fill this squad. Actually, at the last one, he, he didn't quite get full, so there was some re-entries at, at the last one, too. I'm surprised he filled the squad. Lanes one and two are in play for the first time today. Oh, he is Unison one and two this time. Yeah which is uh, interesting. So I'm gonna take the folks through the entire list like I do every squad during the first game. That way, um, as they come through, you know who's bowling. So we'll start down on lanes one and two and bowling on lanes one and two is Gunther Grind, Cody Larson, Billy Goodman, and Tony Miller. Down on lanes three and four, Jacob Borish, Brendan Ceramic, Lenny Borish and Mike Peters. So the Borishes are bowling. I didn't even know they were bowling. Yep, Mike Peters won the last Greater Iowa. Last Sunday won the triple elimination. And there's a couple Mike Peters running around in bowling these days, and it's the Mike Peters that you normally see at this tournament, just so you know. <laughs> On lanes five and six, we've got Michael Lane, Aaron Ramsden, Gary Greaves, and James Husbo. On lanes seven and eight, we've got Nick Pate, Brandon Steen, Dan Bach, and Brady Stearns. Lanes 9 and 10, Dave Barris and Jason Poley are down there together. And a funny fact about those two is Jason Poley won in September of 2013. And Dave Barris won in February of 2016. They are bowling with Ben Truig and Ryan Wilson. On... 11 and 12, we have Kyle Damon, which I read it and almost thought it was Cameron Doyle. Doyle. <laughs> Kyle Damon <laughs> and Kyle Kroll. <laughs> Bowling with Ryan Lakota. Lakota. Thank you. And Josh Powell. On 13 and 14, we got Luke Fisher and Hannah Munson, Cooper Tate, and Ryan Bensley. I think Ryan's brother was in the chat most of the day, so maybe joining us again. On lanes 15 and 16, we got Roger Taylor Jr., Todd Terhune, Jim Howard, and Dwayne Kiltz, who you have on the left side of your screen. On 17 and 18, it's Nicholas Cole, Daryl Helm, Jacob Bedard, and Jordan Richard. On lanes 19 and 20, we have Craig Powles, Alberto Quisada, Dave Lubinsky, and Rodolfo Madrid. Or Madrid's, 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 Rodolfo Madrid's. That's it. Got it. Fifth time. I'm going to guess they're from Costa Rica. Couple uh, of Costa Rica bowling shirts down there. There you go. That makes a lot of sense. Probably a collegiate player. 
All right, on uh, lanes 21 and 22 on the right side of your screen, you see Brennan Haw, Taylor Comer, Josh Gelfie, and Nick Wenzel, Wetzel. On lanes 23 and 24, we have Gary Livingston, Henry Posnaski, Rick Miller, and Mark Porter. On lanes 25 and 26, Bryce Barrett, Brett Fessler, Ronnie Fujita, and Holden Luke. On lanes 27 and 28, we got Jordan Eli, Derek Hine, C.J. Boyer, and Dan Gifford. Dan Gifford's here, huh? Yeah. Dan Gifford. Any relation to Frank? No. Looks a lot like Pete Weber when he's bowling. <laughs> On lanes 29 and 30, we have John Kruger and John Mesher, along with Kevin Peverill and Pete Rush. 31 and 32, we've got some uh, Wichita boys here. We've got A.J. Chapman and Connor Egan with Bradley Kraus and Packy Hanrahan. So those are all re-entries. Uh, 33 and 34, we got Alex Bryce, Aaron Johnson, Logan Langer, Cody Lovejoy. And rounding out the field down on lanes 35 and 36, we have Caleb Baker, Robert Siafa, Logan Graham, and Billy Hibbard. And those are your... 72 bowlers on tonight's C squad. That's the rundown, Tom. Thank you. <laughs> Everybody thanks you. And now that we've gone through the rundown and we've talked about the pattern and we've talked about all the people to support that make this thing happen, now we get to the most fun part of all. So you're going to make fun of me all night? No, I'm not going to make fun of you. Oh, well, that, I thought that was the fun part. We're going to interact with the chat going to interact with the chat. And my eyes now move over to the chat. So, let's see. Matt Turek in the chat. Yeah, no that was way. earlier. Oh, okay. Talking about the Cubs and you, Darvish, today. Big oh, day for your Cubbies. Darn it. We picked let's up another see. quality starting pitcher. Here we go. All right, William Chesser is checking in from Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah. DD or uh, 22 catch 22 says Austin here, home of the King of Swing. Uh, he's moved to L. Uh, he's in Vegas now, but yes, um, he was there for a while. Uh, Craker with gun PS4 says hi. When are we starting? Oh, that was earlier. <laughs> uh, how many lanes does the center have? 36. Uh, James Rutherford's back in attendance. Travis says hello. Um, Charles Smith says he has no sound. That's because we just had our ambient on, and it was very, very silent in here. Uh, okay, let's see. I hope the black curtain doesn't distract the bowlers. I saw people. <laughs> I saw people back there. Um, how's everybody's connections? Uh, everything looks pretty good. Ernesto says. What Mike and the gang from Dallas, 30 degrees, owie. You got it, buddy. Pattern, I think we covered that. Uh, bet it's nice to have some company in the booth. You bet your bippy. <laughs> uh, let's see. Makes it easier to hold a conversation. Yeah, it sure does. With you talking to yourself, you know, I, I could talk to myself. <laughs> Mike, Mike's good at talking. Yeah. He can carry on quite a conversation <laughs> with himself. Yeah, I'll just add characters like <laughs> Macho Man Randy Savage. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, that's right. Elizabeth and I up in heaven smiling down at the Fusion Realtors Community First National Bank open. Oh, yeah. D d is Mitch Beasley going to make an appearance tonight? Well, uh, I lost my cyborg pearl in the parking lot, and I'm looking for it under the snow, and I'm just not sure if I'm going to get in here and uh, get in front of the ball return and uh, maybe uh, move a little left. And uh, pretty good, pretty good. All right, let's see. He had a good week. Yeah, he did. 14th, I think, he 16th, did. something like that. In the he TOC. did. He's been a maniac on social media, too, recently. <laughs> All right, let's see. Please uh, make sure to hit that like button down below. Yes, thank you for that, guys. Um, let's see. Uh, a lot of splits, 38 feet and flat. Yep, gutter on 14. I know Billy Hibbard from EBC Productions on YouTube. Really? Interesting. Um, will you have them college girl bowling teams on again? Yes, Trevor, I will. I'll have them on uh, in March, the uh, Southland Bowling League. Trevor is a big fan of women's college bowling. How many pairs are they moving each game? The skip procedure was one, two, 
three, one, two. They, that's what they announced for the same. Skip one, skip two, skip three, skip one, skip two. Sydney Forrester says, Tom Hess, if you did play C Squad, how would you have played them? That's a good question. That's I probably would have done the uh, started out. Um, once again, I'm watching some guys right here in front of me, Dave Lubinsky, um, playing out with a really good look. I think I would have just been um, quicker to move in to get off the gutter. Once they once they started getting wiggly out there, um, I would have got away from it because once I finally did make the move inside, I had to throw it pretty bad not to hit the one, two, or excuse me, one, three. I didn't hit the one, two at all today. It, it'll be interesting tomorrow. Um, I, I really, I, I thought there was a little bit difference this morning on the low end compared to the high end because they had a practice session last night. So the pattern was out once on the high end, but not on the low end. Um, so I thought there was a, a little bit more um, hold the first squad on the low end due to the fact that it was put out over the house shot. And I think they're gonna, just going to get flatter and flatter. And the people that bowled 160 over today, Greg Young, those guys had to bowl good because it, it doesn't take much for uh, for your ball to do some, some tricks out there. Pierre Coops is checking in from the Netherlands. Hello, Pierre Coops. Greg Inglekus likes to say, I like it when you talk <laughs> to yourself, Mike. Uh, Henry Craig says, Hey, at Inside Bowling, ever since I was born, I hated my name, Henry Craig. Well, Henry, we don't mind your name at all. We're sorry you uh, don't like the name that you were given when you were born, but I think you can change that if you really, really want to. I think you can. Meta World Peace is taken, though. You can't have that one. Okay. Um, Ron Artest already changed his name. <laughs> did, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, David Wheeler says, shout out to Andrew Anderson at the TOC, made the TV fi finals going for his first major tomorrow. Yes, he is, and he bowled fantastic. Pretty interesting stat that three guys without a PBA title are bowling for their first title at the PBA Tournament of Champions tomorrow. Yeah, pretty awesome. <laughs> Douglas Law, if that's the same Doug Law that uh, coached me when I was 12 years old bowling junior leagues, it has been a long time, sir. And uh, if it's not that Doug Law, whichever Doug Law it is, hello to you. <laughs> Um, Jared Fields, you know Billy Hibbard. Uh, Charles Smith says, I, I just hope no merchandise come walking out from the back like they do in tournaments where I bowl. Oh, mechanics, sorry. In the middle of my approach, the mechanics always walk out from the side doors. Well, I don't think we're going to have that problem here. Actually, the mechanic that's working is actually watching our broadcast, so shout out to him. He came up and hung out in the booth for a little bit and was asking me some questions after the last squad. Um, let's see what else we got. Let's see. Quality shot making is a must. Uh, that is right, Jared. It sure is. Yep, we got the scores up, Feeding Frenzy. I'm doing good, Gus. I'm doing good. Um, hey, Boog, how come you're not up here bowling? Doug, it's good to see you in the chat, buddy. I will never forget uh, how you tried to help me when I was younger. Notice how I said how you tried to help me. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take one of those. If Kyle Moore's still there, Kyle, I did bowl the TOC, um, but being the uh, bowler that I am, I missed the cut at the TOC and came back to bowl this tournament. It's the last event on the GIBA season points schedule and. Winning the points to this means a lot to me, so I came home to try to win the points. And this is this is your home turf. This is this is where you've supported and been a part of since forever. Well, I I'm a firm believer that without the GIBAs, I probably wouldn't have bowled on tour. I I grew up bowling them, started bowling them when I was 18 years old, and I've supported ever since. Um, probably, I, I suppose I've missed a couple because of being out on tour, but. Very, very. It, it takes an event like the tour for me to bowl another event over a Greater Iowa Bowling Association event. Um, Joe and his family do an awesome job and uh, quality ran events, and I will always support them. I thought you were going to break into Whitney Houston's I Will Always Love You. <laughs> no, no, no singing. <laughs> 
I did, you, that, I, did you, I did that once on TV. What do you think about me and you starting a, you know, maybe like a dirty dancing like uh, Eli Manning and Odell Beckham did in the Super Bowl commercial? Um, You'll have to lift me, though, but <laughs> What are you saying? <laughs> where, where are you going with that, Mike? Be careful. Remember, I'm sitting right next to you. I know. I know. I know. Hey, I want to thank everybody who subscribed to our YouTube channel. We have just rolled 10,600 subscribers. And if we get to 10,602 on YouTube, he's going to walk back to Utah. Yeah. I still can't believe you didn't do that. You said 10,000 and you'd walk. Yeah, that weekend. Oh, come on. I got there the next week. Come on. I did everything I could to try to get you there. <laughs> yeah, I said I was going to walk back to Utah from the Bradley. You know, for, for everybody that's listening, if you don't like, I'm running a little deal on my uh, social media as well. If you go like Tom Hess Bowling when I get to 3,000 likes. We're going to give away a bowling ball or a jersey or something. Oh, cool. So if anybody's listening and would like to do that. Hope that's okay. I didn't ask your permission. Excellent. No, you can plug whatever you want. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Sydney Forrester, one of these days, he's going to come down and bowl one of these tournaments. Thanks, Charles, for being subbed and getting all the uh, notifications. Errol Cordell has one for you there. Yeah, thank you, Errol. That was uh, that was a pretty good day. Went down and bowled uh, Dave Wazwo and Mike Adamski's event down in Kansas City on uh, New Year's Eve day and came away with the win. <laughs> Bug, you forgot about this event, really? I just got a text from uh, Cameron Doyle. He says, I'll be there in about an hour to join you guys in the booth. Sounds good, Cameron. So this will go. You can either join me or take my spot. We'll see. I don't know. I'm, I'm getting old. You know, the kids on the Columbia 300 staff called me grandpa. I guess Wadka got tired of hearing that, so they switched me over to Ebonite. Put me with all the old guys. <laughs> <laughs> Winding down game number one. Looks like we've got a possible 2-0, possible 180, possible 2-0. Possible 230. Okay, on uh, 21 and 22 at 228. I'm not sure which one. Yeah, I'm going to take you over there now. Um, we have 228, possible 150, or actually finished with 156. 214, 192 possible max scores there. It's kind of weird not having Riggles here. Yeah, I don't know where Jeff's at. I know that he's kind of given up on bowling anything that's non-senior. Dave Lubinsky right here in front of us throwing it hard and straight up the gutter. He uh, needs this hit for 240 the first game. I'm telling you, to start, the gutter is pretty open. But with all the with all the the different varying styles, and you know, like I said, all the urethane that you, the urethane balls, there's nothing wrong with them, not not complaining, but uh, they do pick up the oil and help get the oil down the lane. Which makes them transition really fast. So are you driving straight over to Indy tomorrow? I am, sir. We'll probably not go all the way to Indy. Um, Anthony Pepe, who was going to come with me um, and ride along, decided he he's not as crazy as I am. He didn't want to sit in a car for eight hours on Friday and then do it again on Sunday to get back to Indy. So he, uh, he decided to fly home. 
hang out for a couple of days and relax and, re and regroup after the TOC. Um, he gets in Monday at noon, so I'll probably drive oh, somewhere to where I'm a couple hours away from the airport tomorrow night, then just wait and pick him up at the airport at noon and then uh, head on over, practice session Monday afternoon at 3 o'clock at Woodland Bowl. I am officially, as soon as I'm done here tomorrow, I'm driving to Indy. I still got to book my hotel room. I'm going to book it tonight. You stay in Carmel? I am actually staying with a friend this week. So Are you really? Yeah, no hotel expense this week. Guy might be watching the broadcast. I don't know. Uh, Kevin Archuleta. We're going to stay with him. His, his son Samuel is a big fan of mine, and we've become friends. And they offered. Anthony and I accepted. So you out for the next two events then, right? You're coming yeah. to Columbus as well? Yep. 17-day road trip, man. Kim staying out for both as well? Uh, she is going home tomorrow and then coming back out on Wednesday. And then she's with me the whole time. I think that's going well. Um, I think I think so too. I've been noticing that the the quality of the PBA posts and the frequency of them picking up much better. Yeah, we established a, a presence on Instagram for the PBA. That's a, that's one of them. I've got an Instagram account, but man, I need to. I got them all. I got Instagram. I got Twitter. I got Facebook. But I'm a I'm a Facebook guy. I do a lot more on Facebook than I do on any of the others. I am an Instagram person almost uh, almost full time on Instagram now. Maybe you should teach me. Maybe I should just let you do it. You should just do it for me. Yeah, it's hard to do. I'm not around you all the time. It's kind of an in the moment platform. So I'm going to go up here on the top left for the stories. And oh. uh, I'm going to snap a photo, but I'm going to make it look kind of cool. So I'm just going to be <laughs> like this. Yeehaw! All right, so then that's my story. And then you go up here, the little sticker thing. And I want to tell everybody that it's 8 degrees here. Okay. Because I want people to feel sorry for me. Okay, 8 <laughs> degrees. And then I'm going to grab this sticker thing over here, and I'm going to put where I'm at. And sometimes it takes a while to load if you have a bad Internet connection. So let's start putting in Cadillac, and then it's going to come up. Boom, we're at Cadillac XBC. If I click on it, it'll change it to that. So I've got two options. I like that one better. It matches my shirt. Okay. Then... Uh, I think there's a crown somewhere on here. It's loading kind of slow, but uh, pretty sure there's. There we go. Since you're King Thess, I'm going to put you right up over here. <laughs> King Thess, boy, right, that's bringing back some memories. Uh, right isn't there. It? And uh, I'm going to put tired over here by me. <laughs> oh, I'm tired too, buddy. So there you go. And then I might put a little plug on here um, live on InsideBowling.com. There we go, right there. So then I just hit send, I send out my story. And then if you're on Instagram and you follow me and you go to the top of your page and you refresh, just pull down on the feed here, I should pop up here shortly as soon as it goes out. Evidently I don't follow you. Should show up right up there. Well, I should probably search, huh? Yeah, the Mike Flanagan is my Instagram. Oh, 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 oh. And if anybody oh, else wants to find me, the Mike Flanagan. Gotcha. Oh, you're following. I'm following you. Huh? Okay. Well, then go back. Maybe it just takes a second to send through. And just hit. Just uh, go back out to the main. Hit the home screen. Hit the home thing. Yeah. Pull down. There I am. It <clears> popped up. There we go. So then, if you if you select that. It's going to show you my story. That was me at the hotel last night, six degrees, walking around. Nice. And then you click, you, yeah. Scroll, oh, oh. Nope, you just you just tap the screen. Just tap take the screen. you to the next one. Hey. There we are. I should have tagged you, though. What's that? Yeah, I'm using that as like a divider. 
But uh, can you use that chair? Yeah. There, there's uh, there's chairs over there by my cameras over there. You can grab one of those. Yeah, I just. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I just have yeah. to prevent people from walking back and forth there. I don't really think they would. Oh, they were. That's why I moved it there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you park there, you're probably okay. Then you're probably okay. Go ahead. Yeah, set that up there. And then yeah, grab just, that just chair walk and just the walkway, there. and you're good. There you go. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's fine. So why the why the Instagram instead of Facebook? Man, Instagram like up in this top area, it, it puts like what people are doing like front and center of what's going on. So while I was given that lesson, I'm going to uh, update my graphic as we get ready to roll into game number two. where uh, we've got some action over here. Looks like we've got, uh, who do we have over there? That's Dwayne Kiltz, Roger Taylor Jr. No, we got 21 and two. Oh, I'm talking 19 and 20. Was it skip one pair? So, so they were on. That's uh, Jacob, Bore or Jacob uh, Bedard. Yep, Jacob Bedard, Jordan Richard, Daryl Holm, and Nicholas Cole. And what's the other pair, 15 and 16? Yep, which would be uh, whoever was on 11 and 12. Right? Ryan, Ryan Lakota. Yep, Josh Powell, Kyle Kroll, and Dame, or Kyle Damon. So I will bring up our split screen as they're just underway as well. Yeah, man, just Instagram, I don't know. It's just, it's just, a, it's just a more preferred platform. And, like, people do their up, you know, so, like, this is a, uh, here you go, check this out. Would any PBA Tour pros be interested in submitting videos for Fan Strike Friday? We will still show fan videos. That's a PBA fan account. Hmm. This is a friend of mine in Ogden out hanging out. This is a guy that helped me with my website. He did that for a soccer player. That was an ad. These are some people I follow that are Instagram or that are YouTubers that have 5 million subscribers. That's a guy that just uh, got fired from a tech job and now he's just out vlogging full time. Nice. Um, so anyway, yeah, I just, I just like it a lot better. We just have bad internet in here, so it's not showing really great. The thing I don't like about Instagram right now is they've changed the algorithm now to where it... Uh, yeah, it, it it shows you what it wants you to see first instead of actually having it in chronological order. Gotcha. So, that's why that does that. Yeah, so it's kind of annoying. But, uh, but yeah, that's pretty much Instagram. I'm pretty much going to be done here a little bit. I'm down to 9% on my phone. So. You got an iPhone? Yes, I do. Oh, you're the man. There you go. You are the man. I got power everywhere. <laughs> got anything imagine, and everything you need. Ma imagine that. All right, so let's... Uh, we got some... Uh, let's talk a little bowling here. We got some varying styles going on already here in game two. We got a couple of guys playing 15. Uh... Still got some guys playing the gutter. I think I'm going to move us over to 15 and 16 here. Okay. Take a look at these guys here.
Ryan there is. Uh, Ryan's a PBA member, bowls a lot of the Midwest region tournaments. Looks like he was throwing a black hammer. Got a nice break there. Don't know if he pulled that one or if that's where he's playing. If I, if I was out there and right now, I think I'd be a little bit further right. That's just me. Ryan tends to uh, hook the ball a little bit more than I do. Maybe that's why he's in there. chat. Henry Craig must have left us. He said goodbye. The screen was jumping. It was driving me crazy. I had to reload. They're calling for an A and B squad combined. We need to, uh, we need to get that. Next time we see Jennifer walking around, let's, uh, put in that request. Shouldn't be too hard. I can tell you that 80th, 80 over is 20th after two squads. Wouldn't okay. Know, wouldn't know why I'd know that, but. <laughs> Oh, yeah, sure, absolutely. I'll answer this question, no problem. Can you please tell us the store site again? <laughs> well, of course you will. Yeah, so if you look at your screen, I'm going to let, it's going to be like, uh, where's Waldo? Let's look around at the screen. Oh, 710 picked right there on camera. 710. Kyle Kroll. Kyle Kroll picks the 710. Wow, that's awesome. Nice. <laughs> Back to what I was saying <laughs> before we had this. Uh, actually, you know what? Uh, we need to we need to voice we need to voice that over, Tom. We need to voice over that seven ten. Get a voice over that seven ten. What's his What's his name? Kyle. Kyle Kroll. All right, here we go. You ready? Just just bear with me here. <laughs> I'm going to use this for a voiceover on okay. that clip. Okay. Are, are, are you doing all the talking? Or no, no I'll have me? you come in. Just imagine we're watching him throw his first ball, okay, his oh strike boy, ball. Oh, boy, I'm probably not going to be just, very just, good at just, this, Yeah, you'll I'll be try. fine. Just play, just play along. Don't say anything until, okay. until you know when it's coming. Okay, okay. we're going to voice this over. All right. Here's Kyle Kroll. Tom, you said you've bowled with him quite a bit. Yeah, young man, bowled at uh, St. Ambrose University. Oh, what a bad break, 7-10. Yeah, yeah, awful. That's uh, very easy to have happen here, though, on this oil pattern. I had one today, yep. I haven't seen too many pins bounce out here either, have you? Um, oh, only when I... I, I got a couple to bounce, but only when I didn't need it to bounce. Now let's uh, let's see if he can uh, give it a run here. Those are pretty hard. I, I I give him a shot to make it. Oh, he made it! <laughs> oh my God! He picked the seven ten. It's almost like we knew it was coming. Yeah, kinda. Wow! Congratulations. That was cool. I don't know how many times that's happened here. One tonight. One tonight. Nice job. At least I'll do one Kroll. on camera. Okay, there's our voiceover. There you go, bud. <laughs> Hope I did all right. <laughs> Is that sweet or what? So I can take that. See, I'm, I missed a golden opportunity there, man. 
I should have went 100 to 1. He makes it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'll, I will I will clip that. Oh, somebody's back here bragging that they made it earlier today, too. Okay. Oh, uh, that's funny. Should I tell him to stand up when he's talking to us? <laughs> you know, he's ignoring me. You got another headset? Yeah. Get up here. Get up here. Get up here. Mike, do you know Cody? Yeah. Not like personally, formally. All right, just uh, move this about there. There you go, perfect. <laughs> All right, make sure your volume's good. All right, Tom, I'm going to let you uh, introduce uh, your person you pulled out of the crowd. Person I pulled out of the crowd. Ladies and gentlemen, joining uh, Mike and I here in the booth is Cody Brandow, young man who bowled uh, collegiately at St. Ambrose, and who uh, also, the reason he's in here is because he had to brag that he made the 7-10 also. I got lucky today. Game five down on, I believe it was 29 and 30. Oh, come on. If you're going to tell a story, know the pair, know the facts. Lane 30. Okay. On a double. On a double. Nice. Leave, throw a good shot, leave a 7-10. Oh, come on. We Make all it. know that good shots strike and all good shots strike. It you're couldn't have right. been a good shot if it's 7-10. I stand corrected. <laughs> That's only me. Only I throw good shots at 7-10. Make it to shoot 203. Flip ends of the house, shoot 230. Nice. To get in. Nice. Was that uh, first squad, second squad? That was second squad after a re entry. Second squad after a re entry. So that would have been game five? Game you did five. that for 203? Okay. Yep. I figured on my luck that would have been games uh, two, three, or four when I had 199, 197, 199 for you to knock me out of a bracket with your 203. But eh. the, this morning was a little, little rough, so I didn't get any brackets the second squad. Smart man. I did. The the three 160 games this morning didn't. Didn't give me any confidence. Three 160s. How'd you play them? Did you play them different? What did you see different between the two squads, Cody? This morning I thought we had a little more little more hook similar to last night's practice session. I would agree with that statement. They, I wouldn't say that they were impossible, but I wouldn't say that they were wide open easy either. Looking at the scores, obviously, that we didn't have huge, huge scores this morning. Re-enter. Well, we did, but somebody decided to back up. <laughs> we we won't name that person. Oh, we yes we will. <laughs> I've already I've already drove the bus over him about eight hundred times. But I, I thought the second squad they played a little a little tighter. There was more urethane, from what I saw. I pulled with two guys who threw urethane for four games. Exactly what Tom said. Yep. And I, I also, I don't think we had, there, there wasn't, I'm not going to call it free hook because it wasn't like the first squad. You could just wheel it to the right. Yep. But I thought you had a little bit more miss room to the right. And by, by a little, I'm only, you know, I'm, it, it was minuscule, but there really was no miss right on the second squad. Yeah. Especially um, out on the gutter. I was trying to throw it direct. I was trying to throw it, you know, down the lane. I wasn't swinging it to the gutter. And if you leaked it, it just didn't make it. It just didn't come. The the straighter the straighter part of the game is not my forte. I struggle with ball speed, as many people know, and I like to, to hook the lane and and I wasn't able to do that proactively the, the first squad except for the last game. I had two sixty and that was kind of my decision maker that I needed to re enter. So was that from in or out then? Though? That was that was from in. Yeah, I actually the first squad stayed on the gutter, all six games. Um, this second block, I tried to. I mean, it was there, but I think you had to you had to throw it really, 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 really good to strike. Um, every one of my little misses. I mean, I must have two tend 
four times, five times that second block with just not not really bad shots, just you know the shots that just weren't real good. And uh, they two tend and finally got tired of it, and that's when I decided to go ahead and, and move in and get away from it. And, you know, had a couple of modest two two sixteen two eleven the last two games, nothing real big, but. Like, like you and I talked about there at dinner last night at the at the other place, we tournament sponsor the other place. Yes, I've, sir. I've been struggling competitively this year. I'm not practicing as much. Being fresh out of college, I don't have to practice every day. And it, being an adult, it, it changes, and it's it's not been fun competing for me. And we we talked a little bit last night, and the the main purpose for me moving to a squad from this squad was to give myself kind of a a second chance there as if I could re-enter. So I did after a, a dismal start today and that that game six, the first squad, I, I kind of found a, a new confidence and that I haven't seen on the lanes for a while and I didn't have a game under 2-0 the, the entire second block, and here I am sitting okay for the to make it on to tomorrow. What'd you end up, Cody? I made it to 75. Nice. Got a chance to bowl together tomorrow. Unless they let me at them both, then I'm 159. <laughs> they, but I doubt they do that. I played them a little more safe the second squad. I, I balled down and I threw, threw something that I've, I've had for a long time, it's kind of beat up, and it just kept the lanes in front of me, which is not something that I do all that often. I was telling, I was telling somebody that, I, that was watching the second squad, said, hey, you're scoring a whole lot better. Well, I threw it so bad the first squad that I left two 10 pins in the six games, and I had seven in the first two games of the second block. I was just that much closer. Yep. And it, I think it was just purely decision making. And they, the lanes were different, but they weren't astronomically different to say that, you know, one squad was not as fair as the other or, or that. No, oh, no, I would say that they were, that that, was that would not be, yeah. Um, what, what were the entries, Mike? 44 on the first one? 44. And, and, then I, and I was 80 over on that squad, and I was 12, or I was 8th. And uh, 64 bowlers on the next one. And I had 79 over and was 12th. I would say that's that's pretty equitable, you know, for that basically the Absolutely. same score being 8 and 12th. So I would not I would not say that there is a, there is a squad equity uh, lane-wise issue. Um, there was some... There, there was some more good bowlers. Um, there was a couple of really good bowlers that bowled again, and you know most most of the time when you when you let a really talented bowler like Cameron Doyle see the lanes and then bowl again, they're going to bowl higher. Mm -hmm. And that was that was the case for a couple people. I mean, I I went up 125 pins that squad. I'm not saying my score was huge by any means, but. 125 pins over six games is a lot. Yes, it is. 20 a game. I was a math major. Bowlers are good at certain math <laughs> equations. <laughs> yes. Like yes. bowlers are, you know you're with a bowler if everything goes up by 30. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And if and if and if uh, you see if you see the number nine, you think minus eleven. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, it's always nine out. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, I was ten for ten on ten pins a second block. It's too I, bad you weren't zero for zero. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Not leaving any, like Cody said, not leaving any ten pins could mean that you're not throwing it very good. I've, I've always, I've always said, you, you can't shoot 300 with spares. 
but you also don't shoot too low very often with no spares. I, I just shot 199 earlier today with no spares and three opens. So you're right. I That's not too low. I crossed with Greg Young the second set, and he had three strikes for 199. Nice. Were they all in a row? He doubled in the 10th, and he threw his first one in the 7th. Got to love those. Continuing on here in game number two, C-Squad. Got six games total here for you tonight. We've had A and B. We're going to get you an A and B squad combined list here shortly. Maybe. Yeah, hey, guys, did you guys hear... Uh, did you guys hear hear about what happened with my buddy the other day? Who's your buddy? My buddy, the guy that owns the farm. I didn't tell you guys about this. No. Oh boy, here no, we go. No. Story oh, wow. time. Story time. Yeah, so a buddy of mine, he was very, very, very dependent upon his family when they were growing up. Like, you know, mom and dad very, very close, so um he finally got out of the house, went to college, everything, and decided he wanted to be a farmer. And I'm going to wait for Tom to come back. I'm just going to hear the whole story. <laughs> He's messing me up here. All right, so anyway, so he graduated, yeah, he, so he graduated college and everything. Okay. And this is a true story. He, gradu he graduated college and everything, and he just decided he wanted to be a farmer. So he bought his farm. But the thing in their, in their family that was very, very important is, is – is, naming things they had sentimental value in very unique ways that they wanted to name things okay so he called up his mom and dad and said i really don't know what to name the farm what do you think i should name it so they both said hey do what we did to name our farm turn on the television and the first thing you see name your farm that okay well it was about midnight and he didn't realize he left it on cinemax and the first thing that he saw was a hairy butt so he named his farm Harry Butt, okay? Anyway, the farm went on to be extremely successful. So it worked out really, really well. Well, so successful that he caught the eye of a young lady in his town where the farm is. So they end up getting married. She's beautiful. Everything's going great. Well, guess what? They're going to have their first child. So the kid comes out, and they say to themselves, we have no idea what we're going to name this kid. He goes, no problem, honey. I got this under control. I'm going to call my mom, and I'm going to find out what we should name the kid. Mom says, hey, no problem at all. It worked out great on the farm. Everything's been successful. I want you to go outside, and the first thing you see, I want you to name it that. He says, no problem. Walks outside, and I'll be darned he doesn't look down at the sidewalk, and there's a big old crack. So he names his kid Crack. Okay? So he comes in, tells his wife, honey, Got the name for the kid, Crack. She's like, oh, we can't name the kid Crack. Are you kidding me? He's like, you see how successful the farm is? It worked out gratefully. This kid's going to go on to win a Super Bowl MVP one day. All right, fine. We're going to name the kid Crack. So 15 years go by. This kid is dynamite. He's running the tractor on the farm. He's getting straight A grades in school. He's the quarterback. Everything's going great. Well, they got a lot of corn out on the field, and it gets to be dark, and they can't find him. He's nowhere to be found out, out in the farm. It's midnight. He still hasn't reported back in. There's no cell service, no nothing. So he calls his mom and says, what should I do? you got to call the police. He's like, why didn't I think of that? So he picks up the phone, dials 911, says, 911, how can I help you? He says to the operator, he says, ma'am, I need a lot of help. I've looked all over my hairy butt, but I can't find my crack. <laughs> the police come, find the kid with a helicopter up above. Everything's taken care of. Buddy of mine. Well, it's a, it's a good. <laughs> it's a long way to get to a hairy butt crack joke. <laughs> it's it's a good thing that you timed your your story just like that. It appears down on eleven and twelve <laughs> that that Nick Pate has the front ten. No way. Well, I could get a camera there. <laughs> Ripped. And there's 11. Okay. Ripped. Tom, here's what you're going to have to do. Okay. 
As soon as I have the camera on him, you need to click that button, Kay. and I'll wave when it's time. Okay. Ob observant as I can be. See, isn't it a good thing we asked you to come into the booth and you didn't want to come in? <laughs> Okay. And here he is. Here we are. Young Nick Pete. My grandson here. Looks like he, oh, oh. yep. The Flanagan jinx worked again. <laughs> 299, still a pretty solid game. I would imagine his first game wasn't too bad either. Probably not. Looking down that way, it looks like scores. There's some pretty good scores down there. There's a 220. I think that was Jason Poley. Ryan Lakota had 220. There's another 220 on that pair. 220 right there. Pretty close to what we saw when we were out there. The the 2-0, 2 220 is pretty strong. You guys didn't like my joke. <laughs> well, I liked it. <laughs> I liked it. It was it was cut short. Here, well, here's what happens is you. Uh, when you sit in a booth for a long time, you try to find some really long jokes to pass the time. <laughs> you hit success. <laughs> you hit success. That was a long way to go to get to that Perry butt crack joke. So we've had 299 and a 710 picked on this squad. And we did a good job covering it, didn't we? Yeah. Just, I'm going to go back to the room. I'm going to pull that out of the drive. I'm going to bring it in. I'm going to match up our audio with that other audio. And you're, you're going to listen. I'm going to put that clip out. I'll tag you in it. Perfect. And when you hear it, you're going to be amazed at how great we sound calling that 710. <laughs> I, I bet we end up in the Internet Broadcasting Hall of Fame because of that call. What can I title it for clickbait? Oh, wow. What can we title that? That Bowler cheats and picks impossible split. <laughs> <laughs> Broadcasters cheat and do voiceover. Yeah. The 710 that never happened but did it. Question mark. <laughs> yeah. put, put both <laughs> versions. Um, put the put the version of what happened while he made it, and then go back over, and then put your voice over, and let people pick which one it really was. Which one is right? Yeah, we could uh, we could definitely do that. You know, I need to get an A and B combined list, don't I? I just said something to Rosie. You oh, you did. Look, it might be up. Oh yeah, nice. She said Jen hadn't sent it yet. All righty. Let's go look at that. So she might have sent that. Gary Greaves, 247. What is it, 1980? <laughs> Nick Pate, 240, the first game. Yeah, and then 299. 139. I would say scores were a little higher on that squad than they were on ours, weren't they? Yeah. Let's see how many were plus. 29. We do have an A and B combined now. You ask for it, we go get it. Um, 
So yeah, I have no bowling anywhere right now. Nowhere. I can reach up and turn this camera and we can watch Dan Bach and, and Brady Stearns and Nick Pate. Yeah, we could do that. Nick Pate, back-to-back -back seven pins. Want me to reach up there and turn that? Yeah, let's see how you, you just pull the pistol and turn it left. Pull the pistol. Yeah, it's a, it's a. <laughs> Is this some kind of trick? <laughs> <laughs> You pull, just, pull the pistol. Yeah. Turn it and left. It'll move. Yep. That's Tom Hess working the camera right now. How about that? Down. You we got way too much ceiling. We don't want to watch you bolt. You got way, way too, much. too much ceiling. Yep. You bring it down. Yeah, that's better. You like that? Yeah, that's better. What do you, What do you think? What do you, th you think there might be a future for shot? me in this? There might be. I think we're way too far to the right. Does that even look like a bucket on the screen? Kind of. It's a bad angle. It, yeah, it's a really bad angle. I mean, we, we could straighten it back out now and put it on the sexiest man in the bowling center, Jason Poley. You could. We're going into game number three here. Got to update that graphic. Jason's up on the lane that I most despise in this entire bowling center. Even even the ones that were removed fail in comparison to the now number 19. I was, I was bowling a youth grader Iowa here in high school, and I left the 7-8 split on lane 19 and went between it. Nice. Really? I'll, ne I'll never forget it. I don't believe you. There's no chance that a pin spotter would ever set two pins off spot. You must have been throwing an illegal ball. Your ball must have been too small. It might have been. Well, this is a lot better view when you stand up up here, you know what? It is. Yeah. I like it. The Jason Poley. The Jason Poley. I'm going to squeeze around you now. We, we call him the gift. <laughs> the gift. He's the gift. Clark W. Griswold. It's the gift that keeps on giving the whole year. <laughs> Santa Claus was spotted. You serious about that, Clark? <laughs> Are you talking to yourself again? <laughs> I bet some of the best audio out of this booth is when you're up here by yourself. <laughs> and no one knows. That's right. Well, somebody knows. I mean, the guy's got 10,000 followers on YouTube. How many people are watching right now? Well, the brand does. Uh, well, well, probably 10,000. No, we got a couple hundred. What, well, where are they, Mike? Send them out a notification. Let yeah. them know we're live. I don't know, what, I don't know where they are. I think they're shopping on my website right now. Yes, don't forget. Go buy some T-shirts. Yep. Up to 10,604. Did you hear that joke? That was a good one, wasn't it? Yeah. We just, we just, uh, we just had a pack of 100 people come into the bowling center to hear more jokes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see what I got here. I think that joke is silly. Absolutely fantastic. It's it's one of those jokes you hear in second grade and it just sticks with you your whole life. Yep. It's a joke I'll never forget. <laughs> but but you want to. No, no, Mike, all of our conversations stay locked in my head. I don't how about, know. How about the Olympics, guys? You guys excited about the Olympics? Started yesterday, I heard. They did? That's what I heard. Oh, <laughs> guess I'm excited. I heard there were some really cool drones. Like, they had a like, thousand drones on the opening ceremonies. Really? Yeah. And you weren't one of them? No. Where's your drone? But that's how there's I... Room, there's room for your drone that, in here. That's how I know that it happened. 
I, you need to you need to tell tell Joe the next one you're you're doing that you're gonna fly your drone in here so you can get the expressions of the bowler's face with your drone. That's a good idea. Down at the end of the lane, looking back. It's good. not very loud. Wouldn't We've, bug anybody. I need a shield. Why? Because <laughs> I've already taken out a masking unit once. Oh. Okay. We've, we've got some low ceilings here, but I think it, at Maple it may work. Get, you should have a camera right down there on, on in between 18 and 19, looking back this way, getting some bowler reaction. I certainly could. It's yeah. easy, easy to do. We could move our booth down there, too, and just broadcast oh, from it. Yes. Yeah. What Tom's talking about is that area over on between 18 and 19 right here is a good shot of it. Certainly could uh, set the booth up down there. I'd like to bowl on that lane. That'd be fun. Might I, hook. I'll tell you. I'll tell you guys. If you're a center operator out there looking to generate a little extra revenue for your bowling center, let me tell you about an idea that just might work for driving revenue when you have a big waiting list in your bowling center to entertain people. You ready for this? I am. Tell me what you guys think about this. Open ears. All right. You guys ever go to the carnival? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. What happens at the carnival when you play the games? What can you win? Lots of stuffed animals. Teddy bears. And how does that, uh, how does that work? If you, uh, if, if you get it in the one area, which is the easiest, you get a small bear. If you get it in the next hardest one, you get a, another size bear and a big old giant teddy bear, right? Yep. So let's say you're on a waiting list, long, long waiting list. You take one lane and you call it the carnival lane. Okay. All right. It's $2 a shot. Okay. So it's $2 a frame. You're getting 20 bucks a game lineage from this lane. Okay. You have the guys while they're waiting there with their girls trying to win them teddy bears. Put it on the end lane. Have all your teddy bears up on the wall, everything down there. Okay. And people can come up. they got to rent their shoes, which means they get their shoes on and ready to go. So they get the shoes rented ahead of time. So when they do get their name called for their lane, they already got their shoes because they've been down bowling on the carnival lane. Yep. It's a long line down there, and it just keeps going through. It's two bucks a throw, and you have different things. If you leave certain things, you can get different things. If you throw a double... You know, you, you, you play until you don't strike anymore. You throw one strike, you get the small bear. You throw three strikes, you get the medium bear. You throw five strikes, you get the big, big bear. And it's two bucks a try. And you do that on a Saturday night, and you have an MC down there. Come on down to the carnival lane. Come on down to the carnival lane. Two, three bucks a, sh a shot. Meanwhile, you're keeping all your people on your waiting list entertained so they don't leave and go somewhere else. And you've got an opportunity for dudes to go down and compete and win prizes for their girls. I like it. And in today's society, I guess I should also say that you could have chicks trying to win for their chick yeah. or dudes trying to win for their dude yeah, or whatever, your floats your fancy. But it's an opportunity to take one of your lanes and shut it down and you just have an MC down there running the show for an hour, two bucks a toss or something like that. I like it. The The return on investment would be very high there. You know, the other thing you could do is you could also put a bunch of different colored pins in the rack, okay? Mm -hmm. So no matter where the pins end up setting, if you leave two yellow pins, you win the large bear. Oh, I like that. Or, you know what I mean? I like that. Leave only the, the colored pin. The likelihood of winning the large bear is just about the same with the carnival. Yes. The actual carnival. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, where they take the basketball hoops and smash them together Correct. so the ball doesn't get through. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So anyway, that's my revenue generating idea for all the proprietors out there that have a waiting list on a Saturday night and they don't think they could make any extra revenue. Well, there's an opportunity for you to make some extra revenue. Start a carnival lane, charge two bucks a frame. You can get 20 bucks per game in theory. So why not just do that with all of them? Make them all carnival lanes. Well, now that would be fun. <laughs> that would be fun. But uh, that's today's idea. That's what I do with them. I make them all carnival lanes. Let's leave this ugly little split and see if we can make it to win a prize. 
What's going on in the chat, Michael? Anything over there we need to, uh, we need no, to They're talking about the Olympics right now. Talking about the Olympics. <laughs> Somebody wants you to win a goldfish so that you can take care of it for a week and then it dies. <laughs> As this group of people comes in, it looks like we got more people playing a little further left in this group. I don't know if it's because they're starting to transition already or if that's where they started. <clears throat> Looks like Ken's asking the oil pattern. Today, this weekend, we're bowling on 38 feet. It's a pattern designed by Kegel for this tournament and Cadillac Lanes. I believe we had just over 28 milliliters of oil. 2.3 to 1 ratio. 2.12 to 1. 2.21 2. 2 or 1 2 or whatever. Wait, wait, let me look. I've got some little notes over here. 2.12 to 1. Harder than your average house shot. But there's some good bowlers out here that make it look like. Harder than your average house shot. <laughs> then there's other people that strike like Tom Hess, and it's not any different. <laughs> Yeah, Tom has pulled 12 games today and struck six of them. That's pretty damn good. Actually, I struck 10 of them. Just four of them I also split every time I didn't hit the one three. You got it on, uh, do you have it on dual screen? You want to go back to dual screen. There you go. Happy now, Josh? Just kidding. There you go, that's a good idea. Guy says carnival lane should be random splits. Make them to win a prize. I don't think any of us want to watch Gary Greaves pull, but here he is on our live stream pair. He had, he had 240 the first game. He was squad leader after game one. Quiet over there, Mike. What are you working on? Um, I'm. There's a couple of up-and-coming YouTubers that I have my eye on that uh, have channels, and one of them just went live doing a Q&A, and I was interacting with their chat. I want to do some collaborations because if I could get his 10,000 YouTube subscribers to come follow mine, and I can 20. get and I can get mine to go follow him, it helps both of us at the same time. Both at 20. So this kid actually builds a bowling lane. He's got a mini bowling lane in his house with automatic scoring and everything. A mini bowling lane. Yeah, his name's Braden Brenneman. 
Hi, Braden. How are you if you're listening? He's not. He's doing his live broadcast right now. Anyway. Well, then why aren't we talking to him? Why aren't we? Yeah. Come on. Oh, hold on a second. We got a shout out. Uh oh. Uh, Kenny Seymour has been watching all day. Hi, Kenny. How are you? We all say hi, buddy. Saw Kenny this week. He was up there rooting us all on. Uh, yes, he was. In Akron. He yes, was he was. All week. His mom was posting some pictures on his Facebook page. D does anybody know? Anybody in the chat want to take a guess on who Kenny Seymour's favorite bowler is? <laughs> <laughs> so Kenny brother I know you were typing here on uh, in the chat so if you didn't hear it on behalf of all of us up here in the booth this is your shout out buddy and to your friend Megan as well I hope she's doing well well Larry, Larry Bird wins Eric, it's not me. It is PDW. Kenny, Kenny's a big PDW fan. And Kenny, when you called me on Facebook this week and I answered, I told you who to look out for, up and coming good bowler from the St. Louis area that's been around Pete ever since he was a little kid, Kyle Sherman, and he made match play. So hopefully you took my advice and followed Kyle Sherman this week. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I do have one thing that Pete might be jealous of. That's the fact that I've won the Masters. That's the one that's eluding him. That's true. Do you think he'd, he'd change the, the, what, five or six million in earnings he's got for the one Masters that I've got? Probably not. Probably not. Will Pete get a Masters before he retires? Will they be able to find the magic? And I have a hard time saying no to that. But at the same time, man, uh, that's... That's hard. Here, here's another great question. Will any of those great bowlers that have won the Grand Slam also win the Senior Grand Slam? Well, Pete hasn't won the Grand Slam. He's got the Triple Crown. Do they have? Do they even have three major? I guess should I, I should ask. They've got the they've got a Senior Masters. They've got a Senior U.S. Open. Is there another um, major on the Senior Tour? I don't know. There's no tournament champions. So I guess that makes my question kind of irrelevant then, kind of move. For a Grand Slam, yeah, I just don't know what the third major is. Yeah, so this Braden Brenneman's channel has 11,000 subscribers. And he's got his own mini bowling lane with automatic scoring. Yeah, I'm going to show you. Most popular video. So this video has 5 million views. 5 million views. Yeah, my channel has like 6 million views total the whole time of it. Check that out. Many Lynn spins. Lynn's made those specialty for people with many lanes. Good day.
Watching a video. Watching, we're watching TV while we're calling bowling. Showing these guys a video. We need somebody to do something exciting out here to get our attention. <laughs> <laughs> Except Jason, when you're in front of us. Jason Poley says uh, watching us is like watching paint dry. Oh. So anyway, this is this kid's lane. Well, I've seen one shot, and I can tell you exactly what I would do. I would put my hand right into the end of that lane the very first time I went to throw a shot. Well, he's got this automatic pen setter, and he does videos there. Nice. I'm, I'm quite impressed. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so he does this thing here, bowling with random... Please don't take this video seriously. It's just... One. Nice. <laughs> Tennis ball. That kind of looked like what, me today. One again. <laughs> an apple. I'm jealous now. I'd love to throw an apple down the lane. <laughs> well, you could set that up at your bowling center. You could have you could have an, an object lane where you just can pick any object you want. If you strike with an apple, you win the big teddy bear. <laughs> if you strike with a real bowling ball, you get the small teddy bear. If you strike with a soccer ball, you get the medium-sized bear. There, there's some days that I don't feel like I could strike with a what if I kicked, white What if I kicked the dumbbell. soccer ball and struck? I have not seen the new bumper bowling arcade. You know, the scores are going up a bit. I mean, I, they just feel that way to me. It does. It looks like more guys are striking. So it's six bagger there, four bagger. You get a six bagger, and you get a six yeah. bagger. Yeah. Well, if Nick Pate shoots 299, they got to be easy. Yeah, because that kid's got no talent at all, right? Uh huh, sure. Yeah, uh huh. I hope somebody from the Pate family is watching right now. Brand new PBA member, Nick Pate. And goes into the chat. I'm talking about you. Talking about my grandson. We said that we think that scores are higher tonight. And I said, yeah, if, if Nick Page shoots 299, they got to be easy. So now I didn't say that behind his back. Dan Bach with a nice little 260 game here. I can, get, I can get you a shot of Dan Bach. He'll be on the right side of your screen on 17. Cody, we're going to have some work to do tomorrow, it looks like. Ho-hum, split in the 8-9. That was for 268. Is that all? Was that all in one game? Yep, one game, 268. This morning, I didn't do that in two. <clears throat> Looks like there's more people playing in this squad and scoring better. With, with this unique surface they have here at Cadillac Lanes, the Generation 1 Pro Lanes, they, and being this age, the pattern has to be significantly softer for out to be really good, I feel. And Oh, man. Did anybody see that shot over on 17? Brady Stearns, the upper deck seven? Yeah. Yes, I did. Brady Stearns, one of the how many guys now? 23 or 4 have shot three of uh, 900. Oh, really? He's got 900. Yes, he does. I didn't know that. All right. 
You know what didn't happen when he shot 900? <laughs> that upper deck seven. No, it didn't. I couldn't imagine having the front 35. <laughs> I can't imagine having the front five <laughs> anymore. <laughs> 35. <laughs> Tom, how often do you bowl 300? Oh, not very. I don't know. I've bowled a lot of them in my life. But it. Oh, Nick. That one. That one still hasn't hooked, Nick. What did he do? Double gutter? Yep. Double and then gutter. Double and then gutter. And he had the front 11 earlier. Yeah. Hey, hey, give him credit. That was a ball change. That was a ball change. He didn't just flat That's true. throw it into the gutter. It was a ball change. Here's a question for you, Tom. Have you have you ever bowled a tournament and because you tried a ball on a fill ball, just trying different <laughs> things, that it cost you cashing? Uh, yeah. I, I, I see that all the time, and I wonder, I mean, you know, guys are lined up. They're striking out for 259. They make a ball change and get six. Yeah. I just can't think of how many times that's cost somebody a pin. I mean, yeah. cost somebody a check, cost somebody the finals. You know what I mean? That's what I'm wondering. Like, why has that become, like, okay in bowling? Because people do it, and it's like, yeah, no big deal. Yeah. That drives me nuts. Well, it's, it's even more so frequent in college bowling. They they send somebody else in to get a, a warm-up shot or a fill ball here yeah. in a Baker game. And over the course of 16 Baker games and the – 30 games that they had the day before, you don't think about that. It, it doesn't it doesn't come as relevant to the situation. But in the grand scheme of things, it all adds up. Oh, yeah, it does. One, one single pin matters. Aaron Ramsden bowling a good game. Bowl 237 if he strikes out. Game two update up there yet, Mike? I'm going to guess that we do. Yep, Pate 139 over, Lebinsky 76 over. Did you say it was Lakota or Lakota? Lakota. Lakota, 78, 58 over. He just shot 190. Poley just shot 220. 220. Poley was at 47 over. Yeah, and just shot 220 again. Where was Danny Bach at? He was at 22 and just shot 260. He's 90 over. Brennan Howell, 39. Lenny Borish, 37. Then the Wichita kids. Packy Hinterhand running for Fajita. Fujita. Fajita. Come on, Tom. We know what's on Tom's mind. <laughs> Kenny Seymour just sent me a message on Facebook and said there's a world championships for the seniors. Oh, there is. Yeah. I'm going to trust Kenny. He's along with Adam Lemers is probably one of you know, the biggest bowling fans in the world. Is that how you say Adam's last name? You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. I believe it is. All right, game three almost done. We're heading into game number four. Has it been an hour yet? Didn't K 
Cameron say he was coming back up? <laughs> Cameron says, at 7.15, I'll be there in about an hour. It's 8.27. Typical college kid. College age person. I'm never on time for anything. Hi, Ryan. How are you? A couple fresh faces coming in here. Two twenty seven, two twenty, two twenty. There's two twenties all over the building over there here. There are. They accidentally put out the house shot this squad or what? Breaking news just coming in. Tom Hess accuses Joe Inglekiss and the <laughs> tournament <laughs> no. for putting out the house shot <laughs> no. after he bowls the first two squads and doesn't sign up for the third squad. They wouldn't let they, you didn't hear? Breaking news. They would they didn't let anybody that had already re entered bowl. Oh re -bowl really? On the C squad, yeah. They didn't want Tom to run over the field is what what the deal was. Tom, there was there was zero. And I mean capital Z Eero chance that Tom was bowling the third squad. Zero chance. Zero. 78 over, just why? I guarantee if I'd have bowled, that's what I'd have, that's what I'd have had. 78 over. Might have gone 278 over. How many games are you gonna let me bowl? 20. Oh, okay, yeah, I just, get there. Just five. You, you, you give me 20 games on this, I can get 278. Hey, where's, uh, what's his name, Big Red? Working. Where is he? He's working. Working where? The pro shop. Here? No. Up Bowler's in. Connection. He drills all my stuff. I know, but what, what, he was at this event last time I streamed. Yeah, they didn't let him off. They, he had to work. Really? Yeah. All right. Somebody's got to be drilling my bowling balls, right? I was. Uh, I mean, I was uh, ready for another match. Oh, it looks like we got, uh, is, is this Mike Peters coming to the, one of the live stream pairs? Yep. All right. Lenny Borish. Brandon Ceramic. Well, we just got a jump in viewers. We're up to 217 now. Thanks for joining. Yeah, they knew I was on. Great opportunity to take a minute to ask you to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't get instant notifications when we go live it helps everybody out including us also want to thank our sponsors hashtag support the sponsors we say yes you do fusion realtors first community national bank our co-title sponsors Evanite Waterloo Convention and Visitors Bureau Budweiser the Kingpin Grill logo and fusion they have a coupon code this weekend GIBA18 you can save 20% over there at logo and fusion CFNB mortgage Isle Hotel and Casino and of course we are celebrating on Inside Bowling the launch of our new merch shop and if you head over to insidebowling.com you can see all the new merch that we have available it's uh, t-shirts currently we'll be adding more items and other styles but we have about 30 designs on there including a partnership with Ebonite International to be able to print and use their logos in a licensing deal. So if you'd like to support what we do as we provide free coverage for you and you'd like to support our channel and help us uh, be able to achieve to do more things like upgrade equipment and potentially run some events that we want to do and just expand, uh, consider a purchase over on our website. And you can save 15% with coupon code YouTube, all one word, YouTube. Several folks have taken advantage of it this weekend. We go into game number four here. We are at not Maple Lanes. Instead, we're at Cadillac XBC, Extreme Bowling Center. So they're doing some upgrades here. Recently in the last year, they've taken out 14 lanes, which is the most noticeable. Added a nice gaming and arcade and redemption center. Yeah, I was eyeing up those spider rings and Chinese yo-yos. I was over there. I was looking into, was, hopefully I can leave with about 450 spider rings. Yeah. Hey, your relief is here. Hey. 
The B, the B team's here. The good bowlers here? Yeah. Good bowlers are here. You ready to get out? I'll get out. I'm sure I, I've been on these things many a time. Your viewers probably want a nice, fresh face. Yeah. Did, did he bring anybody with him, or is he by himself? Oh, he's by himself. By himself. I, I Didn't a, bring anybody I with him. I got a lot to talk to him about. You got a lot to talk to him about. I All do. right. Well, All right. well, guys, well, thanks for joining me. I'm getting kicked out, just like my Columbia 300 staff, for a younger guy. Yep. That's <laughs> it. That's the deal. Get in the boot. Get out of here. Mike's had enough of Tom S. He's done. Yep. That's Everybody. What, that's exactly how this went down. Yep. There's no other way that this went down whatsoever. <laughs> it was, I am tired of him. <laughs> I am tired of hearing his voice. Yes, sir. Well, I hope it's a long day tomorrow of Tom Hess on this channel. Uh, I hope it's a long day of Tom Hess. Visually. Visually That's on what the I screen. Mean. That's what I mean. Not talking. But I suppose, you know, I mean, if it comes down to it, I would give you some mediocre commentating if you wanted that for the finals. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks so right. much for joining me. Michael, I thank you for really, having me. Really appreciate it. Everybody, thanks for watching. Don't forget to go like uh, Tom S. Bowling on Facebook. If yes. we get to 3,000 guys, we'll give something away. That's right. Thank you. See thanks, you guys. Michael. Thanks. All right. There we go. We're in game four. We got Mike Peters up now on 21 and 22. Mike Peters is bowling with. Man, I'm having a hard time finding him. Peters. Oh, here he is right here. Uh, Mike Peters bowling with Lenny Boris, Jacob Boris, Brendan Ceramic. I saw Lenny down there. I was sitting all the other bowlers on the pair. Joining me now on the broadcast, our next guest, Cameron Doyle. How's it going, Mike? <laughs> it's going well, man. Are you tired? You know, I just, I just texted Kim a little while ago and said, you know, it's got, I'm kind of starting to get tired. What's Kim doing? She's uh, at the PBA event. Oh, really? Yeah, we uh, do the social media for the mm -hmm. PBA now, and she's been there all week. Gotcha. So uh, that's what that's what she's doing. And uh, <laughs> she caught up on a Doug impersonation that I did. There's a guy in St. Louis that, <laughs> that does these rants. I am tired of it. I am tired of it. <laughs> I'm not going to stand for it anymore. I am tired of it. You're a thing, but like you can just throw out like just different random topics that are controversial in bowling mm -hmm. and just do a whole rant on them. So throw me out like a controversial topic. Oh, my God. I don't know. Two-handed bowling. Two-handed bowling. It should be outlawed. I am tired of it. These people cheating, throwing the ball as hard as they want, as many revs as they want. They can't split a board even if they had a nail gun in their hand. <laughs> I am tired of it. Ban it. Get rid of it. I'm tired of it. I think you've got a new profession. <laughs> I'm not screaming as loud as I want to because the bowlers will actually be distracted. Yeah. All right, give me another controversial topic. Oh, my God. I don't know. Okay, all right, here, here. I, I'm going to write it down on a piece of paper and you throw it out there. Okay. <laughs> all right, because I got something all. Uh, <laughs> now set this up nice. Ask me very polis politely what I think about these. Okay. Mike, um, what do you think about wrist devices? Wrist devices, out them. Ban them, it's cheating. If God didn't give you a wrist device, you shouldn't be able to use it in bowling. I am tired of it. Get rid of him. Is this guy on YouTube? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> He's on a morning radio show. But I can send you YouTube links to him going crazy about this stuff. It's just about bowling stuff? No, no, it's not bowling. It's oh, about, like, okay. like regular stuff. Like, I mean, like, like he's, he's from St. Louis, so he'll talk about, like, the Cardinals. Mm -hmm. Like, a guy will come in and blow the lead. All you got to do is throw it over the plate. All you got to do is throw three strikes. One up, two down, three down. Oh, Sc so this throw is him up, strike on the radio. Him out. Yeah, radio yeah. show, and he just goes crazy. About any any sort of controversial topic. <laughs> we signed Rosenthal for twelve million dollars a year, and he can't get one out. 
You got other pitchers on the team that can pitch seven innings and give up one run. He comes in, three, three, three run lead. Gives up a grand slam. I am tired of it. <laughs> Call up somebody from Memphis. <laughs> Pick up somebody out of right field. He could probably get at least two strikes over the plate. Why do you walk two guys in? I think He's you are screaming. Tired, Mike. Just think screaming tired. at him. <laughs> Wrist devices. Who are we watching? Who's on camera? I actually have St. Louis people in the chat. Your Mitch Beasley impersonation is much better than the Doug Vaughn. Do a rant in Mitch's voice. Do it. That would be interesting. Well, uh, I'm just tired of it. Uh, you know, it used to be pretty good, and now it's pretty bad. Uh, wrist devices, two-handed bowling, uh, it's just bad. I'm just tired of it. Uh, I told him Joe Omar the other day. Uh, you ever see me pick up a ball with two hands even at the return before I put my one hand in it? And it just ain't going to happen. I am tired of it. That was pretty good. That's <laughs> on That's on point. <laughs> so Cameron, who joins me, um, let's talk about you now uh, and what you have going on. And I don't mean you now, the app, either, by the way. Um, okay. You now meaning uh, what starts for you? Next week. Um, first professional tournament of my rookie season. So starting that off next week. And then, unfortunately, didn't get into the players because wasn't um, very clear with the rules on the website. Just a lot of miscommunication with people. Really? Yeah. So you you were going to bowl the Players' Championship? Oh, yeah, and the doubles. And I was going to bowl with Nick Pate, and we both did not get in either tournament. Interesting. Yep. That doesn't sound very good. No. There's a lot of people angry about what they're doing. But I'm not, I'm not really going to. Not going to get into it. Get into it. You're just uh, you're just upset that you that you that you wanted to get in the tournament and you couldn't. Yep. Was it because you were late with an entry or something? Well, according to the website, I was not late. Okay. But according to everybody else that has anything to do with the tournament, it was full before the date they had on the website. Okay. So it filled before they knew that so it was. So basically, the top 75 in earnings from last year had priority up until January 15th. And the other people outside the top 75 couldn't join or enter until after January 15th. And apparently the tournament filled in December. With the members from last year. With the in members the from last 75. year and other people. Oh, okay. All right. So got it. they didn't say that anywhere on the website. So I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Yep. Just larger venue and all that would have probably been eliminated. Yeah. And... Like I said, I didn't really want to go into details, but no, I, I feel you. Like the doubles, there's 53 teams, and there's only supposed to be 48. So some people, there's only 48. Yeah, Tom was talking about that a little like bit. That. Yeah, and you're not even going to get to bowl with your doubles partner. Yeah, that's people. what I heard. Yeah. So just okay. Not going to say anything else. No, I. Hey, man, it's okay to be frustrated. You're ready to be the rookie of the year. You want to yeah. bowl as many events as you possibly can. That's the you goal. You can't. You can't bowl the DHC because you weren't no. invited. No. And you can't bowl the Tournament of Champions, right? Right, because I don't have a regional as a member. Yeah, but let's talk about that for a second. So when you won your regional, how many regional titles do you have? One. One. And you won that as a non-member? Yes. So you have to be a member to be able to be eligible? Yes. Okay. So you're already a little behind the eight ball. Yeah. I did do those tournaments count for Rookie of the Year? Yeah. They do? Yeah. Even the Tournament of Champions? Well... And the DHC, those would count for Rookie of the Year? They would count for Rookie of the Year. if I don't believe there are any rookies that were in the Tournament of Champions. Okay. Well, then that's good then. Yeah. I'm just, I mean, then, it then sucks it's okay. Because there's four majors a year. Are there any rookies in the player in the uh, Players' Championship? I believe so. I know Mitch Hoopé okay. is a rookie and he's bowling. Um, uh, I think that might be it. Maybe. Okay. I'm not exactly sure who all is a rookie. We still got a uh, standings after two is up on InsideBowling.tv. You can go look at that if you like. Um, but we're not going to give a score update until we get game three up, which should be in about 
five or ten minutes. Okay, so you're gonna go bowl. Uh, you're gonna go bowl Indianapolis, 60th anniversary event. Yeah, and then just got some a couple local events around in February, and then I'm going to Colorado to bowl the Super Regional early March, and then going overseas to the Brunswick Euro Challenge in Germany. Have you bowled that before? No, not bowled that before. I hear that bowling center is just awesome to go to. Yeah, I've seen pictures of it. It looks great. And then doing a thing for Ebonite at the end of March, and then April's busy, really busy, with the Masters, the stuff in Maine, the singles. Are you going thing. to Maine? I'm going to bowl the singles part of it. You are? It's right after Masters. Okay. And then Boom Doubles, Detroit Cup, all that is in April. Who are you bowling uh, the boom doubles with? Barnes again? No, because it's you can only have one PBA member per team. Oh, really? And also another thing that sucks is collegiate nationals is the same weekend, so it almost eliminates everyone, really. So isn't the isn't the main thing very close to there too? Yes. So you can't bowl the members won't be able to bowl the boom doubles if they're on a PBA league draft team. Okay. So who are you gonna bowl with? Brandon Biondo. He was. Uh, he was there the one year I went to Wichita. Yep. And I posted on Facebook a couple of weeks ago, needed a partner, and he texted me and let me know. I said, sure, let's do it. Detroit Cup. You're going to bowl the Detroit yes. Cup. And then what other PBA? You're going to bowl all the extra frame stops? Yeah. Hmm. And then... Whatever I can go to overseas, the gonna go to the Lucky Larsons in Sweden later this year. It's all later this year. Thailand, hopefully Korea again. Basically everything I can. And then some uh, Ebonite video shoots with Mike Flanagan. Oh, really? Yeah. Got to put like two or three of those on the schedule. Got to talk to Rob or... Did he say that? No, I'm just I'm just messing with you. No, we need to do that. I know. Man. I know. What did you think of the recent videos that have been done with Corey? Have you noticed oh, them? Oh, yeah, yeah. They're good. I like the uh, one with Tommy and Ronnie. Which one? The uh, the, the, the Game B Breaker 3? Yeah, the, ba the Baker game. Yeah. Did you see the Ronnie one where Tommy makes the cameo? Um, possibly. I don't remember. Yeah, Ronnie was using the verdict pearl and then in about the sixth frame. Go ahead. He goes over and he st he stares oh, a couple lanes over and oh, Tommy's, yes. yeah, Tommy's there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just like the way Evan, I, I like the way you guys are doing ball videos now that are live. I, I can't stand regular ball videos. Every ball looks the exact same. Everyone says the same thing about it. We're keeping it real. Real yeah. feedback. The idea of a ball video is, is hard. I mean, what are you, you know, what are you supposed to? <laughs> um, like, what are you supposed to do? for a, a ball, ball video. video. I don't know. Like, in my opinion, I think what we did back in September with the lit was kind of cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's similar. I agree. You and Wesley throwing the balls. Kyle and... Uh, and it got everyone involved. I Kyle think. and Nick throwing the balls. Yeah. I don't know. And you shot, you shot like, a huge score. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for four games with the lit. We should do that more often. We yeah. Might, we might have a, a new ball coming out pretty soon where we can do that. Yeah. So uh, very soon, actually. Yeah. I'm sure we can talk to, talk to Rob, somebody. Yeah, you know, I tried to figure something out with that. Here's the question for you. So you can't bowl Columbus. No. Are you going to Columbus? You're not going. You, where are you going? Go back home after the 60th tournament. How far is Columbus from you? Columbus is maybe six hours. Because Corey's going to be there. Is he? 
in Columbus. And we could, we could pull you out for a day. And you and I and Corey could get in contact with each other, and we could come up with a concept, and we could we could shoot something. If you're game, yeah. Whatever you want. That to do. ball release schedule is kind of weird, though. So if we shot it, Corey'd have to turn it around pretty quick. Yeah. On that ball, because it's like the twenty fourth or something like that. Yeah. Time. Yeah, we need to, you and I need to have a separate conversation about that ball. It's a good one too. You like it? Oh yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. What do you like about it so much? I don't want to say anything right now. I've got to keep people waiting. <laughs> <laughs> we are talking about the same one, right? Yes. It's got a similar name to the one you threw in September? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, I guess we'll just have to keep an eye out for that. No, we should really seriously try to work that out. Oh, yeah. We should. The uh, scores are updated on uh, InsideBowling.tv if you want to go check that out. They've also been being tweeted out by the lovely Kimberly. Have you ever met the lovely Kimberly? Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you know who the lovely Kimberly yes, is? Yes, I do. You do? Yeah. Okay. The lovely Kimberly. <laughs> Your <laughs> woman, right? <laughs> like I own her. Yeah. Your woman. Yeah. Yeah, I know her. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, well, she's helping out tonight. What she's, she, she's tweeting stuff? Yeah, from her hotel room in uh, in uh, wherever she Akron. Is she watching right now? Yeah, I'm sure she is. Thank you, Kimberly. Greatly appreciate it. See? Did Cameron Doyle gave you a shout-out. Now, at Junior Gold, if somebody – some of the people that were there were uh, – if you'd have given them a shout-out, they might have fainted. Do we have to talk about that? Cameron is uh, quite the hit with uh, with the young ladies. No, I'm, I'm taken. No, well, I don't mean that. You know, it's yeah. like it's like your Michael Jackson from the '80s, Elvis Presley. I don't know if you'd put me up against them. Well, what I do is I think in progression. I think okay. Elvis Presley, Michael Jackson, Cameron Doyle. I mean, you go right in hand well, in I hand with that. them. Thank you, Mike. Kim's got a response for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> anything, right? Yep, anything, anything, she says. Anything for you, Cam. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. She makes a heck of a uh, microwave popcorn. I'll take it. Yep. We have all the seasonings. i got to come visit the Flanagan residence. You should. You really should. I've never been to – it's Utah, right? Yeah, it is in never Utah. never been to Utah. It's it's not bad. It's okay. Yeah, we could just shoot a ball video in Utah. Let's yeah. do that. Fly the drone around? Y yes. Throw a ball off the mountain? Yeah. Actually, we could go to Park City and throw it off the ski jump and try to strike off the ski jump. Could you imagine if we did that? I know. Oh, I can imagine. I know you can imagine. Wow, that'd be neat. That would be. Maybe we can do that for the for the ball coming out. Yeah, maybe we could do it for a future ball coming out. All right, all right. We're sitting here coming up with all the ideas right now. This is uh, marketing 101. I didn't take that one. No, I know, I know. You, <laughs> you didn't take many classes. <laughs> you uh, you came from a school though of uh, hard knocks, right? Correct. School of hard knocks. You can't really even claim that either, though. No. But you could say that you have uh, work experience. Correct. Yeah. Hey, I come from the I say, I'm cut from the same cloth, man. That's why we get along so well. That's right. What are your expectations coming into an event like this? Into something like this? Yeah. Well, kind of how I looked at it was just. Gave me something to bowl, something to kind of practice with and get prepared. I'm kind of looking at this, looking at the bigger picture next week. So the, the lanes aren't easy here. So it's going to get me as ready as I can be. And that's kind of how I look at it, just a good tune-up, see how I do, work on what i got to work on from here, and 
Lenny Boris with the 210 pickup. Go from there. Let's see if my replay's working. There we go, Lenny Boris again, 210, in case you missed it. Boom. That's Lenny with a fist bump. There you go, take that. Take that, Mike Peters. I'm the nicest guy on planet Earth. <laughs> Where's that at, Malene? I was right over here. Did you did you not catch the replay? No. Oh. I, see I wasn't even watching. All right, let's do it again. You ready? Here's the replay. Uh, I'm going to let you call it now, okay? Lenny Borish, no, I'm setting I'm, you up. Nope, I'm not calling setting it. Setting you up right here. Ready? Here I don't you go. Know how to call. Look at this. What, was that a 210 or a 2810? 210. Oh, okay. I thought it was 2810. 210 right there. I had two skinny Elvis Doyle. We had a question earlier in the chat, wanted to know, does your shirt start tucked in and it just gradually comes untucked? Yes, they always start tucked in, and then two Gone. shots have to practice it out. Okay. That's why on my new high five jerseys, I had to make them like four extra inches on the bottom. Oh, that so works out. out. That's a good idea. Is that extra? Um, Three bucks an inch? I don't even know, really. <laughs> we are at Cadillac XBC here in Waterloo, Iowa. I'm Mike Flanagan, joined by Cameron Doyle here in the booth. He competed in both the early squad and the second squad. Did you know that there were going to be re-entries? No, did not. So you came in today just thinking you were only going to bowl the six games this morning, and that would be it? Yep. And this morning you went 60 over? 64, yep. And you were in like ninth? Yeah, didn't like it. And you wanted to improve on the score, so you re-entered the tournament. Was it 150 again? Same price? Yeah, it was. Same price, mm -hmm. so you entered again, and you got to? Got to 99. 99 over. With about a 150 left out there. And you used urethane? Uh, for the first four, and then I switched to a Phenom Pearl for the last two. Okay, so you went with black urethane hammer? Black urethane hammer. And then game for the first four, and then game five and six, the Evanite Game Breaker Phenom Pearl. So I was talking with Tom Hess earlier, and Hess was, you know, beating himself up over everything, you know, and I was talking to him before we came on the stream, and he feels like if he's just a little off, he pays the ultimate penalty. But then when I went through his arsenal with him, he's got a lot of high end balls. Yeah. And I started thinking to myself, if you're not splitting boards or throwing at absolutely perfect speed every time, wouldn't you want to go to balls that are much more controllable? Yeah. And I mean, sacrifice a little carry here and there? All I know is I, I paired with him the first squad, and he couldn't miss the first four. I mean, he was probably leading by 50 after four. Yeah. And then not a very good last two. Yeah. So, I don't know. I was just I was just talking to him about his strategy because your strategy and his strategy is the exact opposite. Oh yeah, because We're you two completely different. Because you came in just wanting to control the pocket, keep it around the one three all day, and you know with your spare shooting ability and your strike percentage and your ability to read your own moves and know your game, that if you're around the one three the whole day. Yeah. And at this tournament against this field, you're in good shape. But you might have had a different strategy if you were bowling against some of the greatest bowlers in the world and you were a couple hits a game behind the field. Yeah, well, the way I looked at it was after two or three shots in practice, I knew that they weren't going to be super high scoring, so I went with the urethane to stay safe. And you get bowled my, safe. I bowled safe the first squad, just trying to – get as high up as I could and then go at it tomorrow but then I realized there was a re-enter so I went I mean I still went the same strategy on the fresh but I had to be a lot more aggressive the last two I probably should have done the last three just to get closer to the next number not really looking at the, the cut line going to tomorrow kind of looking a lot farther ahead than that okay You've, have you, you've bowled Fusions before? No, this is my first one. Is it really? Mm -hmm. So you, you haven't been to Maple. No. Maple uh, hooks a lot more than this place. 
Oh Jesus! This is a real treat for you. This one hooks a lot. Well, but they know, but they put a lot of vo they put more volume on it, Maple, to try to combat that a little bit. So are you saying this is a this is a hooking uh, Brunswick Pro Amvoline for you? Like there's friction out there? I mean, the pattern definitely makes it seem like that. Really? Oh yeah. Wow. I mean, Nick Pate bowled 550 the first two, playing fifth arrow, <laughs> swinging, <laughs> literally hooking the whole lane. And I heard he um, I heard he threw it in the gutter from fifth arrow on the fill shot. He came and told me about that. Game. I don't know if it was from fifth. Was it a, I guess it was a ball change. Game three. Yeah, it was right over here. said it was on live stream. Well, 17 and 18 is not on the live stream pair. Oh, okay. But it's near the live stream. What time do we start tomorrow? 9.30. 9.30. So what kind of uh, expectations do you have for next week in Indy? Um, Cash? No, I want to... I want to make the match play for sure. Okay. So if I don't get there, I'll be extremely disappointed. That's the goal. I never really set my goals too low. I mean, if I I don't want to go to a tournament if I don't think I can win. Okay. So I mean, obviously winning is always the goal, but sometimes you got to take it one step at a time. But always set set the expectations high. Are there any PBA patterns that you've bowled on or that are similar to what they're putting out that you think are, is going to play more to your favor than others? Uh, I know we're bowling on 45 feet. I think it's the Dick Weber pattern. I've never bowled on it before, but I, I think they've been pretty soft in recent years. Soft, I mean higher scoring. So it's probably just going to – I mean, I have no idea, to be honest, how it's going to be, but – I tend to like the longer patterns, but you can you can never tell until you actually get there. Mike Peters is one hell of a bowler, and he can only shoot 156, and he just went runaway Brooklyn for the first strike in the 10th frame. We've been watching these guys bowl in front of us, and not very good scores coming off of this pair. Mike, I recall you guys talking about making a ball video. Make one like when the Crux came out and bowled through peanut butter. I was somewhat involved in that video, by the way. I was working for Storm at the time. Game three standings are updated on InsideBowling.tv. As of six minutes ago, Nick Pate leads at plus 134. Dan Bach is in second at plus 90. Third is Pete Rush at plus 83. Fourth is Jason Poley at plus 75. Fifth is Dave Lubensky at plus 74. Bradley Krause sits sixth at plus 71. Lenny Boris seventh at plus 64. Eighth, Ryan Lakota, plus 48. Ninth is Aaron Ramsden at plus 44. And Brady Stearns is tenth at plus 42. Currently right now in this squad, we have 24 people even or better uh, out of 72 in the squad. Do we have a overall? We have an A and B combined to can go, I, to go with this. Anything you would like to see, I will get for Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lane. A and B combined. You were 11th. All right. There you go. And there's nobody out there bowling anywhere. We got, we got nobody here. We got nobody here. So I'll bring up the graphic. Cameron, where do you think people should go while we're waiting for bowlers to come on? What do you mean, where, where do I think people, bowlers should go? Oh, um, let me tell you. <laughs> all bowlers, all fans of bowling, anybody that knows anything about the sport of bowling should go to InsideBowling.com and purchase the new merchandise that has just launched on the site. Let me tell you. Oh, my God. Most comfortable fitting shirts in the world. The best taglines, it doesn't get any better. Remember, like, over a year ago, I gave you a Paradox T-shirt? Yeah, I still have it. How did that shirt feel? Great. I wear it all, 
as much as I can <laughs> without looking homeless. That's the same style shirt that we're actually selling now to everyone. Let me see which one I would one I would pur purchase well, first. You, you might go into this into this closet. Okay. There'll be there'll be some more there'll be some more added in the Columbia like, 300. I like line. the one on the far left. This one here, the mm -hmm. Team EBI. Yeah. Is this just you? Like you're doing all this? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You can get all these different colors, Team EBI. So. Sorry about that. We had to answer a question uh, with tournament director real quick. So, yeah, thanks for the plug on the website. Yeah, I mean, you've come a long way since I was just some little kid bowling the inside bowling. <laughs> dot com open in St. Louis five years ago. I used to be scared of you, you know. You were like first time I saw you, you were much taller than me, so I was like. Really you were afraid of me. Not really afraid. I was just intimidated. Intimidated. What? What made you intimidated by me? I don't know. Just because you were important. Oh my gosh! Running a tournament. <laughs> yeah, I'm like making me angry. I'm totally the least harmless person. In I the know world. that now. <laughs> so we launched the website yesterday at 11 a.m. Oh, today's doing decent. Yeah, that's for the week. So if you look at just today. That's pretty cool. You tell me people are watching it right now. Yes. Yeah, yeah, the how many people are on the site shopping right now. And you can tell where. Yeah. We got anybody from, like, Asia? Uh, or is this just in the U.S.? I think it's just U.S. But yeah, I mean, it's really incredible what they do. It shows you... That is pretty neat. Yeah, so here. Uh, so if I go share this everywhere on my social medias, do I get a free shirt? Oh, I can hook, I'll hook you up, Cameron. Right, I'll, right, take, right. I'll take care of you. So here's something that you can do that's pretty cool as we talk about the shop. We're also watching our uh, subscriber rate. Let's see where we sit on subscribers on the YouTube channel right now. What's your long, like, I want to hear what what are your goals for this year? By the end of the year, you oh, want to be you. sitting here. Thank you for asking. What we'll, do you we'll want? Go over that. We'll All go right. over that. I'm gonna bring you into lanes 21 and 22. We've got bowling again. This is where we're at with our YouTube subscribers. So here's what I want you to do: grab your phone real quick, Cameron, and I want everybody to do this at home. Um, go to just bring up a web browser, and let's go to uh, InsideBowling.com. Check that out, InsideBowling.com. Sometimes browsers struggle a little bit, Cam. Yeah. All right. All right, so give it a second. Give it a second. Wait for it to load. Not the greatest cell service in here. Or the state. Just keep giving it a little bit of time. Hold on. It should pop up. You should get a pop-up. Might be my phone, Mike. Yeah, you should be getting a pop-up. There should be a pop-up to join the mailing list. And I want to show you something really cool. Let's see. Let's see if I can help you out here. Let's go here. Let's go here. It's already happened on my browser. It doesn't do it right away. 
So what happens on here is there's a pop-up that comes up and it says, let's see if it'll do it here. It's because I've already been on this site. Anyway, a pop-up comes up and you can, it says, do you want to sign up for our email list to save 15% on your first order? And what happens is, is it automatically sends out an email with the coupon code, which is pretty sweet. Okay. And over here, it adds subscribers automatically to my email list here. And when you pull this up, there's what you get in your inbox. Oh, nice. 15% off. Yeah. So is anyone that goes to the website? Mm-hmm. Yep. You get that email sent to you. But gotcha. what's cool is if somebody goes to the website at 3 a.m. and I'm sleeping, all this does it does it automatically. Oh, okay. So it's just amazing what is available now at your fingertips. So talking it over with Cameron Doyle here in the booth. We're doing a little uh, e-commerce lesson as we've just launched our new InsideBowling.com store. And when Cameron and I get together, we talk a lot of shop. We talk about what's going on in bowling in the current state of bowling and how we can grow it and how we can market it better, how he can personally market himself better to his fans through his social media. So you're getting a little behind the scenes look at some of the conversations Cam and I have that um, you know that's that's what we're talking about here while we try to figure out what this cut number is going to be and uh, plan of attack for tomorrow. Um, the, the nice thing about these tournaments up here Cameron, since this is your first one you bowled is the way Joe pays out. It's not very top yeah, heavy. All the way down. Do you prefer that? To an extent. Um, I mean, it's, it's great that he's doing it. And of course, your opinion is going to be different based on skill level. How you, skill level and how. Like, I can't really give an opinion since I'm towards the top half of the leaderboard. If I was at the bottom half of the leaderboard, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's great to pay down farther. <laughs> right. So, right. like, but going into a tournament, I mean, 60 is great, but I think it's a, it's a little too much. Just a little. Too many bowlers? Too many cash spots. One, Do you think that that helps feed the tournament, though, in the future to stay I, full? Yes, I, I think so. Because if so people eventually go away, it's then, a two-way street. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not. Hey, I'm just, you know, talking out but loud. But definitely uh, depends on the skill level of the player. If you finish 11th in the tournament, you'd get 560 bucks. Yeah. But if you finish in the top five, you get a thousand. Oh, is that the current payout? That would be on 150 entries, but he got more than that. Okay. 2,600, 2,000, 1,500, 1,200, 1,000. If you finish in the top five, you get 1,000. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. For a weekend tournament? For 150 bucks. Yeah, for 150 is really good. Yeah. And he tries to keep the cost down so that, you know, just local folks can bowl too. Yeah, I mean, paying down as much as he does, that's going to attract a lot of people. The last cash box gets 220. You know, one in three cash ratio. So hats off to Joe on what he does here. Let's see. Hey, Mike, how is uh, that Brent Boho? Is he bowling on the squad, but his name isn't on the standing list? Brent Boho. Why isn't he on the standings list? He is 15th at plus 93, Brent Boho. And that was on the uh, on the last squad. He bowled the last squad. I don't believe that he re-entered. I have not seen Brent. 
Have you seen Brent Boho in here? I have earlier, but not this squad. Not, not this squad. squad. Yeah, so Brent's not bowling. He's happy with his number. Um, Mitch already stopped by. <laughs> uh, can we watch 15 and 16? I'd be more than happy to switch that over. Uh, let's see. It seems to be a disadvantage to be assigned to the C squad because you can't do a re-entry if you bowled bad. Well, they normally don't take re-entries here at all. And judging by the scores on the C squad, I think the people that are bowling C squad are pretty satisfied with what's happening here tonight. But you can pick your squad if you get your in early enough. That is absolutely right. So, Mike. <laughs> uh, by the way, I need to just make mention that Team EBI shirt that you like so much. Mm -hmm. uh, Kim designed that shirt. Oh, so she said anything. Tell her, tell her I want that shirt. <laughs> Okay. So your goals, Mike. Oh, the goals, the goals, the goals. So, Cameron, let me tell you something. Um, in 2017, I didn't like how the year went. It okay. just it just wasn't a great year. Um, the IB Open sucked. It was just a bad it's situation. A big loss. Yeah, it was a big loss. And the thing that I think fried me the most about it is there were a couple of bowlers that tried to run the math on it themselves and were like, uh, we don't believe Mike. We think, it, we think it did just fine. You know, like I heard a couple rumblings like that, and it really fried me. Like it really – because I did lose a ton, and then to still get negative press from it after giving up that much money out of my personal pocket – that's part of the reason why there's not an IB Open this year. Because if these people thought I was getting rich off that tournament, I would keep running it. Not at all. You give it all back. And just shutting it down pretty much shoves it in their face that, look, I'm perfectly fine taking the weekend off. Yeah. You know, I'd rather take six grand to Vegas and go have fun than go work an entire weekend, have to plan a tournament months in advance, you know, have to do all the filings with it, booking the event, hauling in bowling balls. So taking a bunch of time from other people. Do you ever plan on bringing it back? I do not plan on bringing that tournament back. So something different. Yes. Um, so I'm at the point now, Cam, where I was looking at looking at my uh, my following on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and right here on 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 YouTube. You know the subscribers and and Twitter, and we've got over 10,000 subs now here, which is awesome. And this yeah. space is my favorite space to be in, and I love interacting with the chat. I love the people that watch this, and I've, I'm really trying to embrace YouTube as more of a YouTube creator, like a lot of the like stars on YouTube do. That's why when you come and watch our streams, like we just we just talk during qualifying and yeah. stuff. It's just different. Like there's some you watch and there's just silence. Yeah, and, and it, we're, we like to be. I like to call what we do a little bit more like uh, MTV version of bowling. And then I like to call the, the Bowl.com, the Bowl TV channel, which what they do is great. Don't get me wrong. I love those guys. They're friends of mine. But that's more CNN-like. Oh, yeah. You know, they're the governing body. And then I think that Extra Frame is kind of like ESPN. Kind of, sort of. That, that's, that's, that's where I put them. We're MTV. Okay. All right? MTV is a lot more interesting. Well, well, it can be, but it can also put some people off. And, like, you know, seriously, MTV, like, what are you doing? Who, who's yeah. uh, who's Snooky? You know, like, who are the, you know, like, Jersey Shore and stuff like Beavis and Butthead. You know, like, yeah. that. that's the kind of stuff that would appear. So, so that's that's kind of been the mentality over here. But we can also get serious. Oh, I know. When when we get down to five or whatever, you know, you'd, you'd think I'm up here, like, just trying as hard as I can to be this the best. This is just your qualifying mood. Yeah, this is, right. And it changes over time. I'm like a... I'm like a song that has highs and lows, and it just changes. Mm -hmm. So this is actually the time that I, ha that I hate. I don't like qualifying. You like being serious? I, I prefer, well, here's the thing. On the archive version of this, about 2,000 people are going to watch this broadcast back. Okay? The finals, we could have 
100,000 people watch that. The really? Bradley Open Finals mm -hmm. between Pilon and uh, EJ Tackett it sits at 55,000. Rewatches. Yeah, but the qualifying squads are around 20,000. Or I'm sorry, around 2,000. Oh, wow, it's that big. So it's just, it's just not as much demand. People don't want to watch this either. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean. But, but we do this because it gives everybody an opportunity to be on camera. It gives us an opportunity to really understand the bowling center, test the, test the connection, make sure everything's cool. But really, I'm always thinking about that, that last broadcast. Sunday. And I've got a list of things that are important that have to happen on there. You know, you got sponsors. They need to be mentioned at the right times. You need to bring the broadcast in and out. You need to explain what's going on. And then you need to be able to know the subjects and be able to say some things about them in a, with an opinion and be able to observe what's going on. So all of that is cool. Um, so... Um, with all this following, it totals up to be about 40,000 followers. Okay. And there's overlap. You know, some people like all of them, which most people that are watching tonight is the same way. Um, Amber Simpson says, Mike, let me know if you get partnered with Fanny Hose. I got a pair of those and broke them at the city tournament. They were a hit. Yeah, and that's one of the things I mentioned earlier. You know, I'm going to partner with, with folks like even like yourself, Cam. Like if let's say you wanted to design a T-shirt. I could get you in touch with my designer. You could design a T-shirt, okay? Like you could do a Cameron Doyle uh, T-shirt replica jersey. And what I mean by that is you take the design that's on the front of your Columbia 300 jersey and it just screen prints in a big rectangle on the front. Okay. It's got all your logos, everything on there. And then on the back, it's got your, your, your name. Just wears a T-shirt. But it's a T-shirt, yeah, right? So you, we could make that for you. My, my supplier could make that for you. And you don't have to carry any inventory. It's just made, made on order, just like all my shirts are. Yeah. So because it, does, because it has a different print spot, it, it costs more to print on both sides. So your replica jersey T-shirt might have to cost 30 bucks okay. instead of 25 Gotcha. And all that does is covers the additional printing. Yeah. Okay? So you sell for 30 bucks. Okay. And you can probably make five, six bucks off of this shirt, seven bucks maybe, okay? okay? What I would be willing to do for the athletes out there is give you all the profit off of that shirt. So what do you get out of it? I get a lot out of it. Marketing? You're going to go on and promote that shirt on all your social media. With You're going to drive people to my website. Yeah, true. While they're there and they're shopping to buy your shirt, they're going to see that they can get free shipping for $50 or more, and they're going to start adding items to the cart that are mine. Like and, crazy. and I now have their customer information, and I can then send them coupons in the future to buy whatever I, I want. So all you're doing is helping me with customer retention. So why would I, if you're going to help me do that, why would I tell you I need a cut of any money for your name and likeness? Should. That's how I run my ship. That's how the show runs here, brother. I don't take any of your money. Yeah, true. You make every cent off of that because you deserve it. Does that make a lot of sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. You got some good ideas. So that, so that's that's how I want that to work. So Josh Blanchard has a book. People aren't thinking about his book all the time. I like his book. I read it. It's a good book. I like Josh Blanchard. If I'm doing a good job driving people to my website, if they're looking for a book, I want my I want his book on my yeah. website. So he's sending them to my distribution center. I make a couple bucks for carrying the book. He gets the majority of the money. He moves more books. It helps Josh Blanchard. If I ever need him to do a promo for my website or something, he'll do it because I, I, he owes me a favor. And we work together and we collaborate. That's how the whole thing should work. Stephanie Johnson with... Fanny hose, same situation could work. It could work for any, any, but I have the distribution set up and I have the website set up. Yeah. And I want to help other bowlers because that's what inside bowling is all about. We after all, think about doing it. Yeah. So that's, that's how that's going to work. Uh, okay. Let's see. Got some more questions in here. Pick up my bowling bad t-shirt. Can't wait to wear it in league this week. Appreciate that, Eric. Um, can you customize the t-shirt you have for sale now? Uh, say the make bowling great again shirt. Could you have a bowler's name put on it? You know, Jeremy, we could probably get into that, um, but I will tell you that that starts to create a lot of chaos and a lot of moving parts. Um, I, I'm not going to say that it's impossible, but, you know, we've been online for about 18 hours, and adding that complex of an element would probably be a year or two down the road if we even want to go there. Um, I don't see many people necessarily wanting 
well, if you if you want like your name on the shirt or whatever, like on the back or something, most tournaments won't allow you to wear it anyway. Um, that's something I appreciate the comment. I just I don't know how feasible that is, but good question. Um, how would you feel about doing a shirt for a college team? I can certainly, certainly help you with uh, doing that for a college team. I could make it available. I can make as many designs available on my website as I want because I don't have to carry any inventory. But with that, I want you to know I'm not making a lot of money off these shirts, everybody. I'm trying to prove a concept. Um, because they're direct to garment and they're one-offs made every time, you know, I'm not getting these T-shirts for $5. <laughs> you know, up that cost almost times three. Is, is about my cost on these things. By the time I give free shipping, I'm looking to make just a couple bucks a shirt. And I'm using it as, as crowdfunding to help source and grow into doing other things that I want to do. So let's just say the YouTube channel right now is at 10,500 subscribers. And I want to get to 100,000 subscribers as fast as I can. Let's say through people supporting the channel and just changing a buying habit of buying a t-shirt from Inside Bowling as opposed to Kohl's, by making those changes in what they wear and what they do, if I could sell a thousand shirts a month and I make three bucks a shirt, that's three grand. I could maybe eventually hire a video person that is just dedicated to the Inside Bowling YouTube channel. And we could start putting out like trick shot videos. We could start doing a bunch of different sort of more interesting type videos that could go viral and get more hits. That's what I want to do. To, trick gro shot to grow to 100,000 subs. Because once you get to 100,000 subs and you have people outside of the industry looking at bowling because maybe they saw a trick shot, but also there was a tip in there or how great bowling is, you should come try it. See, because that's what happens with most of the trick shots and stuff that's on now on YouTube is it's just a trick shot and it's over. Yeah. There's nothing that pretty much says, hey, by the way, thanks for watching this trick shot, but hey, did you know that you can win college scholarships or you can pay for your college by taking up bowling? To find out more information, go to insidebowling.com forward slash scholarships to find out more, to get people hooked on the game the way we love it. Yeah. Look, I'm to, I, 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 I agree how someone might that's a bowling purist could say, oh, Flanagan, don't go down that road. Don't do trick shots, whatever. Don't do bowling with Costco bears. Don't do these crazy ideas that you want to do, bowling off ski jumps, whatever. But if it's a strobe light to get somebody in your store and you can still put a message on the back end of it that gets people interested in bowling and hooked on bowling, then you got something. Yeah. So I'm using the crowdfunding. If you watch any YouTube channel that you like, Philip DeFranco, Casey Neistat, David Dobrik, any of these guys, they all have merch shops. David they all Dobrik's have they all good. have ways to do inside stuff that 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 they can get they can be supported by their fans. Well, it's at the point now with 10,000 subs and almost 40,000 influence on on the internet after after eight years of working this brand and growing it to that part time. It's time for me to get serious about it. I know you can do it. I mean, you've had these ideas forever. So 2017 was a rough year, like I said. I lost a social media account as well. I was totally blindsided. I, did, I had no idea it was coming. Which one? I was given like eight hours notice on it. I don't want to get into it, okay. which is okay. It's no big deal. It happens. I learned from it. Now I'm more motivated. Okay. Because that happened, I'm more motivated. So I said this, this, this year, in the first half of the year, there's a few things I want to do. And I've been telling Kim this, and she can't believe that I actually had one happen already. I worked my ass off on this website. I got another guy, too, that, that has been helping me a lot. His name's Carlos. He's really helped me out. Okay. There's other people that helped as well, like Eric Banky helped me with some designs. Kim helped me with all the setup at the beginning. There's a lot of people to thank that were part of this journey. But it, it finally happened this week because I, I set a deadline and had to be done before this tournament. I said it's it. got to be done, and I got it done. Okay. The next thing I want to do, Cam, is I love talking to people. You know that. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe that the podcasts in bowling right now are done in a way that people are like, oh, there's a new podcast up. I can't wait to listen. I think that there are some, some useful podcasts out there and some guys that I respect that are doing online podcasts. But I feel after eight years of doing this and talking to you guys on here, that there are, and listening to podcasts myself that are in the industry, such as the Joe Rogan podcast, this guy Tim McKernan out of St. Louis, um, just a lot of different podcasts out there. Dan Patrick's show. Um, I listen to the, uh, the Herd, you know, Colin Coward. So I spend a lot of time. You just click the mouse right there. Where are you going? I just want to check the standings while you're talking. Yeah. Right. There. We do have an update after game number four. We'll get back to podcast in a second. 
Nick Pate plus 122, Pete Rush plus 108, Jason Poley gets the plus 86, Dan Bach plus 82, Brennan Hall plus 74, and sixth is Brady Stearns at plus 66. Seventh is Rodolfo Madrid. Is it Mad Madrid? I don't know. You don't know Rodolfo? Well, Rodolfo. The scores are coming down a bit. They, they are. 62 over. Eighth, Lenny Boris plus 60. A.J. Chapman's in ninth at plus 57. And Dave Lubinsky is plus 54 and 10th. And right now there are 22 people plus on this squad of 74 people. Let me tell you, leading right now is 160 over, and it's not going to get any. I, if it is, Nick's the only one that has a chance. Yeah. So with three squads, all the re-enters, all the bowlers that came, and 160 over is leading, and leading by like 40. Yeah. That says something about the pattern. That's great. That's that's really good. They do a good job here. There's a lot of good bowlers here, and if 225 average is leading by that much, that is, that's, you, that's you, what I like to see. You'd give them an A plus on yes. the pattern. Yes, yes. Well, that's good. First time coming. That's a that's a testimonial. Sure. They, you should have Joe Engelkiss should write that down. What Cameron said and put it right on the front page of his website, which just so happens to be giba-bowling.com. By the way, this game uh, finishing up. I'm going to make a graphic. I was talking about podcasts, right? Right. Going into game six. It's going by quick. You get me talking, and I can get through it. Hopefully everybody at home's like, okay, Mike, you lost me. See you tomorrow. Hopefully they're not saying that, I should say. How many viewers we got? Yeah, we'll go there in a minute. About 200, I would guess. Probably 50 of them are people waiting to know what the cut score is. Okay. That probably already bowled the tournament. Listen on the way home. But it's these sorts of topics I actually like talking about the most. Um, game six. Graphic, got to build that, put that up. And all right, game five, just wrapping up here, almost into game six. So I really like these podcasts. So one thing that I want to do. What do you plus? What do you got? Just seeing what Packy was plus, plus 24. 24. So he's going to need about, probably needs 220. I don't, I don't even actually know what the number is. So. Well, what, what was like. How many, what's the cut? How many are we taking? I, I don't even know. Do you guys know how many they're taking? It is one in three. 60. They're taking 60. So what was... So through A and B combined... What was 45th on A and B? 45th was 20. Uh, it's going to be a little higher than that. I think it's going to be... Let me tell you. Go to 38, 39. No, it's not 21. Okay, can I see the other squad, the, this current squad real quick? Yep. I'm pretty good at guessing these cuts. Um, okay, so, yeah, it's not going to be much higher than 30. It might, it, might be, mm, it might be 35 max. I'm going to take a guess and say it's 28 over. All right, I'm going to take, take a guess, too. But if you think that's, they still have the re-entered people in there. Yeah, I know. So it might so actually be less. What's your number? Well, i got to think about it now. I'm going with 23. That's exactly the same number I'm going with. All right. I'm going to go with 22 just so I can be right. All right. 23 over is going to be your cut number. If you get to 23, you're in. That's what Cameron and I are predicting here. Okay, so I got the store launched. Okay. Next thing is I need to drive people to the store. Otherwise, I'm going to get very bored with it, and it's going to become dormant, and I'm not going to continue wanting to put new designs on there, and I'm not going to want to continue to keep pushing it. So I'm going to start doing Facebook ads okay. to get people to go to the store and possibly purchase some of these things. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start a podcast. Okay. When, when's that going to start? Uh, I have it slated for me ordering all the equipment when I get back from this 17-day road trip and working with it and learning it and I want to start recording some of them in March and I'd like to launch April 1st. April 1st, all right. And I want to launch a podcast a week. You heard it, ladies and gentlemen. One a week. April 1st. April and I Fools. Want, and, yeah, and I want to use the podcast 
to drive people to my merch site. Okay. And entertain, of course, but from a marketing perspective, you know, it's going to be about the inside bowling store. I like it. Can, and I, can I be a guest? Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, so, like, here's, here's an example. Like, here's who I want to have as my first guest. Because I think the first show will be the roughest, and I want to be put at ease, and I want to have a, a very simple, easy guest that is very well-spoken. It'll give me good answers. Um, and I want to interview Parker Bone on the first show. It's a good one. I want Parker Bone on the first show. And I don't want to ask the obvious questions. I want to I want to set up my podcast that is kind of a cross between um, inside the actor's studio with James Lipton from years ago to um, on the audience network. It's undeniable with Joe Buck. He does a long format interview on there. Okay, that's actually produced by Vince Vaughn. And then the other one is uh, off camera with um, off camera with Sam Jones. So those are three different interview programs that I watch religiously that I've studied and learned, okay? Okay. And I also listen to podcasts. So this will not be a video th- format. It will be audio only because I believe in today's society, people are doing more than one thing. I bet a lot of people that are watching this broadcast are listening to us talk while they're doing something else right now. Oh, yeah. They have us open, and they're listening to the broadcast. And if we say something interesting, like, they'll click on it. Oh, my God, the scores are updated. Scores went up 50 pins. Then they'll put down their, their soup or their ramen noodles, and then they'll actually click on the screen because they were browsing, and then they'll start seeing what we're interested in. But I believe that a podcast, if done properly, can be educational and bowling, entertaining. I will enjoy every episode because I enjoy talking to people, and I'll be happy to put my podcast out. So, And I have a goal with the podcast that I wanted to get 10,000 downloads a week. Okay, that was my question. What was your goal? My goal is ten, within six months it needs to be doing 10,000 downloads a week, and it will be available on iTunes and on the Google Play Store. Uh, so you would use this as some revenue? Go off, no, there's off. no revenue involved no, in that. Nothing. But no. if it's on iTunes, is it going to be free? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's a free podcast. Dan Patrick doesn't charge. All these other people don't charge. I'm not going to charge. So what, what are you trying to get out of it? I'm just trying to... You know, when I when I I will say things like I do on here. If you are enjoying what we do each week, and it's helping you pass the time, and you enjoy what's going on, um, check out our merch store. You yeah. know, help support what we're doing. Um, support the sponsors, the sponsor of the program. Yes. Um, that's the goal. All right, I like it. And but the reason why I want to do it is I actually thoroughly enjoy podcasting. Like, I used to have a show. When, when was that? Oh, I think you told me about this. Yeah, I had a podcast seven years ago, eight years ago. Me and Doug Lakey would do a show. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you came up with it. Yeah. So I'm, I want to get that going. So first quarter this year is this merch store and a podcast. The other thing I have to do is this YouTube channel rolling 10,000 subs made me feel like I got to get serious. Okay. I, I owe it to the people. I want to get to 100,000 subs as soon as possible. How soon do you think you can do that? That's hard. That is hard, brother. That is really, really hard. Without a huge financial investment, it's going to take like four years. That long? Yeah. And it took how long to get to 10? Uh, seven years. Well, maybe six. How many would you say you, you get on a like a regular day? Oh, how many subs? Yeah. I was getting like two or three a day when my channel was dormant and I wasn't putting out content. But if you go to this website, anybody can look this up, socialblade.com. You go to socialblade.com and you can actually look and see how many subscribers you're picking up. And I'm talking real YouTube stuff here, everybody. You can can follow along at home. Looks like my browser's having a little bit of issue. Let's see. Got game number six underway. Take you out to the lanes. We got our scoreboard. So here you go, Cam. 27, 29, 26, 29, 33, 17, 12, 14, 7, 10, 12. Um, we came into today at 10, 5, 42. 
And we are now, that's going to jump up. So 19. That's going to jump oh. up. So we picked up like 70 subscribers today to the great people that are watching right now. They subscribe when you provide content, and that's what we're doing this weekend. Okay. So I'll pick up 250 subs this weekend probably. Probably tomorrow. more tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah, that's a, that's a big goal. That Beca is a big goal. Because what's important on YouTube is when you, how, how often you upload content and what your viewers do. If they like what you're doing, they hit the like button down below. You get another order. Yeah. Mike Flanagan's just raking it in in here <laughs> while we're live streaming. Yeah, raking it. Raking it in. <laughs> um, so I was going to show you something. Um, I was going to show you. Here you go. Take a look at this channel. Brad and Kyle. Oh, yeah, they're, they're doing good. You know, look how many subs they're picking up a day. They're picking up 20, 30 subs a day. Okay. Which is great. That's great. Brad and Kyle channel on YouTube is 782. Hey, everybody, if you're not subscribed to Brad and Kyle's YouTube channel, you should. Oh, they're at 804 now. They yeah. rolled 800. I'm going to put a link in here, you guys. Do the podcast live. I'm looking forward to the podcast. Mike, you're doing just fine talking. Please don't go MTV. The planet died a little when MTV stopped being music television. I do like some of these ideas I see here in the chat. When I say do it for a college team, it would be more for a fundraiser for the team. Yeah, you might want to go do that on your own. You might want to have them screen printed and made the same design and do that for fundraising. That might be the best way. Um, but we could certainly offer a shirt and just give you the proceeds from it. Cameron's going to bug out for a minute. Have a game to go. We think that the cut score is going to be around 23. Cameron says 22. I say 23. Thanks, Bagger 300. That's nice of you. I order T-shirts from creators on YouTube all the time. Because if they're spending the time to provide content for me for free, I think the least I can do is order a shirt from them. Cameron will be right back with us. Nice of Cameron to sit in. If we're talking too much uh, business marketing, online marketing, I apologize, folks, but that just happens to be the kick we're on right now. And, and while Cameron's gone, I'll mention this. You know, I think these young bowlers are very impressionable um, and can really make a difference and, and carve out a revenue stream for themselves. And if they can do that and gain more followers and more fans, you know, it's going to do nothing but help all of bowling. You know, if Cameron Doyle walks into a bowling center and there's 50 people outside waiting to get in to watch him bowl and follow him around in a gallery wearing his merchandise and getting autographs and hanging out with him, how great is that for bowling? So I like to motivate the young bowlers out there to, to do these sorts of things. A guy like Cameron, you know, Kyle Sherman's got a great uh, YouTube channel with Brad Miller that they're working on and they're working hard at it. And... A lot of us can get completely demotivated by a lack of success or subscribers. And, you know, once I hit the 10,000 threshold, it's like, it's game on, let's go. And someone like Cameron, if he starts a YouTube channel up, he's going to start with zero subscribers. And he might get to four or 500, and then it's going to be hard to get another couple hundred because his diehard fans have already subscribed and unless you're putting out good content you can't get picked up by other people so I like to try to inspire young folks like Cameron because I think a lot of them and I think a lot of these young bowlers deserve um, more financial success I think 
bowling centers deserve more financial success. I think the overall salaries in bowling, you know, it should be should be like top golf, you know, really should. So that's why I like talking about it. A Logan Paul take. Yeah, I'll give you a Logan Paul take. Uh, would there be any money in event-specific T-shirts that have limited availability? I've always enjoyed the I got a T-shirt business model. Limited. Uh, I want to read that through again. Would there be any money in event-specific T-shirts that have limited availability? I have always enjoyed the I got a T. I know what you're saying now. Okay, so you're saying like, you know, hey, I went to the concert and I picked up the tour T-shirt for the concert that year, and then I've got them from every year when you two came to my town. I get it. I get it. I will tell you the thoughts crossed my mind. Um, like, you know, for instance, uh, I wouldn't mind possibly running a deal where anybody that purchases this weekend. Um, if you spend fifty dollars, you're going to be sent a Fusion Realtors Community First National Bank Open. I watched this tournament 2018, you know, T-shirt or something like that. Potentially, um, I like the idea of being able to uh, to do things like that, but. You know, if I made that shirt, I don't know how many people would buy that this weekend, but it, it's a thought. Um, the thing with the way my stuff is set up is I'm so busy, I don't have time to, like, actually print inventory, put it at the house, Kim and I to fill the orders, you know, print UPS labels, post office labels, all those different things. We just we just don't have the resources to do it. So we have to pay someone to do that, which means there's not as much, um, it's not as much profit, I guess. Because, you know, quite frankly, I wanted the T-shirts to sell for $15. <laughs> you know, that's more in a sweet spot of where I want to pay for a T-shirt. So instead with them being 25 and then having coupons out there at 15% off, and we'll occasionally do some 20s and stuff, you know, Black Friday and things like that. But, uh, you know, there's also, you know, there's royalties involved as well with our partners that we have and um, – credit card fees so when that, that all adds up and we're, we're niche t-shirts you know if you love bowling you're not gonna be able to find what we're putting out anywhere else not gonna be able to find them some of it you might be able to find somewhere else but we're gonna be competitively priced I'm more or less just doing it just to see if I can run an e-commerce store and I have a completely separate bank account set aside for this and that money's just gonna sit there and grow and then I'm gonna do something with it and I'm not talking about taking a cruise. It'll be it'll be something cool. So I'm just trying to get more. How awesome would it be if you went to the mall, and if you saw, you know, 20 people wearing bowling-themed cool T-shirts? Would that be good for bowling? Be better than what it is now. Just like this YouTube channel started with zero subscribers. We had zero t-shirt sales yesterday at 11 a.m. By noon, we were on our way. And the world is set up. I mean, you got to do a lot of work to build all this stuff, but I found a really awesome website. I found out that Red Bull and Bose, the, the speaker company, and Cameron's going to join me. I'm going to share this with him as well. So making making that website, Cameron, it's actually a template website, which I'm not a fan of template websites. Like, go online. We could build you a website. You just plug and play, right? Mm -hmm. But what happened was when mobile devices became the big deal, having a fancy website that displays beautifully on your desktop went out the window. Because people don't look at it on a desktop anymore. All on the phone. It's all on the phone. So you don't need fancy on a phone. You need simple and efficient. So I noticed that Red Bull and Bose, the speaker company, they both use Shopify. They, Super they, simple. They fired their like web 
programmers and just went to the Shopify and just hired really cool creative graphic people. Yeah, I've seen a lot of good things about Shopify. And it's yeah, and super their, easy. And their stock price is going up too. So anyway, that's my, my, my site is built off Shopify. Okay. And uh, you can go build a Shopify site. It's $79 a month, and it's 2.9% uh, credit card processing fees. And there you go. I just was on the phone with Wesley Lowe. He's going to tune in here. Oh, yeah. Wesley Lowe texted me earlier today. We're going to the same wedding. Oh, really? Whose is it? Roger Nordic. Oh, okay. Coming up in March. I want to give a special shout out because I know he's watching right now. It's uh, it's uh, Greg Young's dad. Oh yeah. Yeah, he he's sitting in his. I know what he's doing exactly right now. He's sitting in his his brown chair in the corner of his living room right now. He's he's got the live stream hooked up to the big screen. He's probably sitting right next to his wife Sandra. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, he's probably drinking wild turkey or <laughs> something like that. And he's I guarantee you he's been watching since 9 a.m. Yeah, the whole day. He watches every single live stream, everything you do. Really, I mean. Is he a fan of this channel? He is a fan, yes. Oh, he is. Well, I like his son, and his son's so awesome that his son bought a T-shirt today. Yep. Yep. So, Mr. Young, me and Mike Flanagan say thank you. Oh, yeah. No doubt. Aaron White says, and you can link Shopify to Amazon. Yeah, I saw that, and I still have yet to do that. I also got to build out my shop on Facebook. There's so much work to be done. Gregory Young. There he is. He's already commented. You the man, Cam. And that is, he has the same name as Greg, so. It's well, I think it was his dad that purchased the shirt then. I don't think it was Greg. Oh, uh, yeah, Greg. Greg didn't buy the shirt. No, dad's money. Yeah, Greg, come on. Do we have a five-game update? Go right here and we'll look. Not yet. 31 minutes ago. So it should be. Okay. Well, it'll refresh on its own.
I got 23, you got 22 on a cut score. Yep. Thanks, Gregory. Uh, what kind of oil pattern are we on today? 38 feet in length. It's uh, 28.53 milliliters of oil, 2.12 to 1 ratio. We're at Cadillac XBC in Waterloo today. Cameron bolt on it, says they hooked a lot. He bolt on it twice. Yep. Couldn't get enough the first squad, so I had to go again. Fun, that is. Didn't have enough fun. Eric Lowensbury, or Lowensbury, sorry. Thank you for the order, sir. Oh, nice. they move from Maple Lanes? Well, Maple Lanes and uh, Cadillac XBC have the same owners. And this event has taken place here before. I know of at least once. Might have been two. Let's see. I can tell by the... Okay, so it was at Cherry Lanes when Matt McNeil won. Then it was here when Derek Sapp won. Then it was at Maple when Nick Heilman won. It was at Maple when Jason Poley won. It was at Maple when Casey Murphy won. It was at Maple when Tom Hess won. It was at Maple when Matt Smith won, Stephen Keeler won, Dave Barris, Casey Murphy, Vince Biondo, and Chris Pearson. So this is out of the uh, three, six, nine, out of the 12 events, one was at Cherry Lanes, one was here at Cadillac. So this is the second time it's been here. Okay. And Derek Sapple, 300 in the final. Did he bowl this year? No. actually got it up here on the screen right here. That match. All right, so here's here's Derek Sapp. Is this the 11th? Yeah, 11th. No, this is 12th. Watch this. Brooklyn for 300. <laughs> this other guy's bowling 260 also. Dave Barris, yeah. Yep. Dave Barris bowled 260 and lost. That's on our inside bowling channel. As a matter of fact, you guys, I will post a link to what Cameron and I are talking about right now. Okay, let's see. This is a good question. Uh, oh, Amber, maybe the first one was at Cadillac and Matt's picture was just taken at Cherry Lanes. They may not have had a picture. That's probably a good call. Good call. Um, here's the question. That for, this is the question of the hour. Let's handicap yeah. tomorrow's world, uh, world or uh, tournament champion show. Ready? Yep. Okay. The first match is Matt O'Grady taking on B.J. Moore. Who do you like in that game? Um... I don't really want to say a name and then hear it, but I'm going to – this has nothing to do with – No, it has nothing to do – it's just your gut feeling. Yeah, I mean, I watched some on the live stream. <clears throat> My bad. I watched some of the live stream this week, and I liked, I liked uh, B.J. Moore's look on the fresh. A little bit 
Moore. Uh, so I'm that's take, a nice pun. I'm going to take uh, B.J. Moore the first game. Okay. So I also would take B.J. Moore. But it wouldn't surprise me if a guy like O.G. Yeah, put on a show or something. And, and, and runs the ladder. Yeah. Like he could. He's, Anything can happen. Yeah, he's perfectly capable of it. But, yes, I, I think B.J. Moore will defeat Matt O'Grady. Okay, and then, he, and then they bowl Belmo. Yes. Okay. So what Belmo was doing was probably – I saw he was using urethane. Yep. And I know he had 299 in the first game. But that's with four on a pair, so that would be kind of similar to game two. Probably won't throw urethane on the show, but I, you never know. Um, you can't really bet against him. You really you really can't. You can't. So I'm going to go with Belmo. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go with Belmo as well. But there is something to watch for. There's a story that could develop here. Belmo's got a new ball coming out. Yeah, the drive, so he might want to be throwing that one. Okay. And maybe, maybe that could come into play and hurt him. And that's what he did last year at the players when his ball just came out. And he won. He won. I don't know how much he threw it this week, but, yeah, he definitely could be doing that for sales. But what he but what he did this week was with the other thing. Yes. So that will so. be an interesting to pay attention to on the show for handicapping the show. Be interesting if, you know, obviously if there's not a look with urethane, you know, he's probably going to try that other ball. But anyway, there's just something to think about if, as you're watching the show, things that uh, things that could happen. So, I will take Belmo as well. But my caveat on that is, watch what bowling ball he's throwing. Look how he's matched up, and you never know. Yeah. So I think Belmo's smarter than that though. So, but we'll see. So then, say he gets through that, they get. They get Andrew Anderson. Andrew Anderson, and this is this is the, this is the very interesting situation. Um, nothing. I, I like Andrew a lot, but uh, I mean, bowling on live TV for your first show, uh, a major going up against Belmo for your first time on TV, and 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 when you got the dragon right behind you in Jesper. I don't. Yeah, I don't think anything about ability is gonna affect him but the nerves and the anxiousness and everything else that comes along with bowling on TV I'm going to say that's going to put him at a, a disadvantage just guessing you never know it could could drive him to bowl better but I'm going to take Belmo to the title match versus Jesper and I'm going to give the match to Jesper okay I also think if it is Belmo and Jesper Jesper's going to win so we have a pretty similar Predictions. The Andrew Anderson thing, though, is interesting. Yes, that's going to be fun to watch. It's interesting because there's a couple of things about the guy that he's got going for him, in my opinion. Number one, the statistics of the two seed winning is higher than, than the, the number ones. one seed. Yeah. Okay, so he's in that perfect position. They talk about it all the time, Marshall and Randy and all of them. Okay. Okay. So that's interesting to me. The next interesting thing is... is I've watched Andrew Anderson bowl a lot, and normally there's a chink in the armor. He has a hiccup somewhere. He didn't have a hiccup this week. And when it really got, there were big crowds down the stretch in that bowling center, and he bowled 300, and he thrived on it. He's been bowling really good lately, so. He went to the Bradley and bowled phenomenal and was sharp as attack. Then he went to bowling IQ with Pilon, and those two practiced for two weeks straight, and he feels sharp as can be. So uh, you never, you can't tell. It's hard. You can't really. No, you can't. But here's the here's the key to Anderson's match. And this is what everybody should watch. If the pair on TV is hooking, Andrew's tendency as being a young person on television is to get, be amped up and throw it past the break point. If they're hooking, that amped up and projecting it down lane and possibly being a little firm could come into play positively for him. And they probably will be hooking at that point so what would normally hinder a young player like AJ Johnson when he threw it out of the back of the building could actually help Andrew Anderson if he's got a piece of urethane in his hand and he's out and he's attacking the dry and he's being firm and aggressive it could actually come into his face it could it could come in as a plus yeah now if there's if there's a bunch of oil down lane the break points tight he is going to have to do an amazing job of keeping himself extremely calm, breathing, being very deliberate with his pre-shot routine, et cetera, et cetera. Yep, I agree. I think he has less of a chance 
if they're tight down lane. Okay. Because I think Belmo, B.J. Moore, and O'Grady are going to be better with the lanes tight down lane, with the pattern tight down lane, early hook and tight down lane. Their rev rates are going to are going to trump Andrew Anderson. But if they're hooking and he's got to look from out. I don't know what balls he threw this week. I didn't a purple see. Purple urethane. Really? Purple urethane hammer down the stretch. That's what he bowled 300 with. Okay. So, anyway, so that's kind of my thoughts. I, I put Andrew Anderson on a normal show. Should be at 20% odds of beating Belmo. Um, if they're hooking, I increase his chances to 40%. Okay. That's my take. What about on this show? Or you said a normal show. You mean just like 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 if they're if the lanes are just playing normal. Okay. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like like if or if we were just taking all young people first major show and how they perform and what they do in this situation, I put them at like twenty percent. But in this particular case, I just want you to know that if the lanes are hooking and they're not tight down lane. I increase his chances to 40% okay. against Belmont. So pick one right now, and you think Jesper wins it all. I don't know what the left's going to look like. I got to imagine they're going to be fresh, and Jesper's going to just, you know. Just Jesper led the World Series by a million and lost against Belmo, uh, Belmo in the final. So I, I think it has nothing to do. It starts over tomorrow. Yeah. I, I mean, it's... It's Jesper. I mean, Jesper, if he can use your thing, he's And he's won this tournament before. Yeah. So so is Belmo three times. If you look at if you look at Karma, though, and you look and see how Jesper won against a Mitch Beasley who had no look whatsoever on the last time it happened, you know, could, could Jesper's side of the lane just be jacked up? Like just he just never gets matched up because there was no other traffic. You just don't know. Mm -hmm. you, you just don't know. But yeah, BJ Moore. We both agree on that. We agree on Belmo. We agree on Belmo, and then we agree on Jesper. Those would be the winners of the matches. But we also have built in there that you can never count O'Grady out. And I mean, can, they all made it for a reason. Yeah, you can't count and, anybody and, out. And Anderson. But obviously, Belmo's going to be the favorite. A little bit more than Jesper, I think. So, Cameron, it's been great having you here in the booth. This is the last ball of the turn tournament to be thrown. Um, we are going to sign off. The cut score will be posted in the event information tabs on InsideBowling.tv. And you'll also be able to see the standings will be tweeted out as well on Twitter. I want to thank you for listening to us talking about t shirts and. Uh, goals for next year Cameron was asking me about. I hope you enjoyed listening to Cameron talk a little bit about the events and stuff that he's got coming up and how he attacked the lanes here today. I want to thank Tom Hess for joining us in the booth as well earlier. Um, thanks, everybody, for being with us for, you know, 12 hours of coverage today. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm going to head out here soon. want to say thanks to Mike. He's always fun to talk to. And uh, if you were listening at all throughout the broadcast, uh, just launched a new merchandise on his website, <laughs> InsideBowling.com. Most comfortable T-shirts in the world. So go check it out. 15% off on, was it, uh, you sign up? Coupon code YouTube. Coupon code is YouTube. Yeah. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Hopefully I won't be in this booth <laughs> at all, unless it's for an interview for winning. Um, but I'm going to go home, get some rest, be back at it in the morning. I'm sure Michael, this is where he lives, so. He yeah. might sleep here tonight. No, I'm not doing that. I'm getting some sleep. While he rakes in all the money off his new clothes. Right, right, right. I just showed you the breakdown here in the booth. It's not a lot. It's, we'll get there. So Cameron Doyle merch coming soon. Uh, i got to get a little bit better before we do that. <laughs> got to make a show before we do that. All right, buddy. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Mike. All right. That's Cameron Doyle. Hope you enjoyed listening to him, hanging out a little bit. We wish him a bunch of luck out on tour and success this year and hopefully he goes on to be rookie of the year he's got a big event coming up next week in indianapolis but he's got work that is unfinished here at the fusion realtors first community community first national bank open uh, it's a good opportunity now to go through the sponsors just one more time to help make this event possible 
Hashtag support the sponsors, Fusion Realtors, First Community National Bank, Ebonite, Waterloo Convention and Visitors Bureau, Budweiser, Kingpin Grill, Logo and Fusion. You can save 20% off over at Logo and Fusion with coupon code GIBA18. Save 20% at LogoandFusion.com with GIBA18 is the coupon code. Go over and support Logo and Fusion, great sponsors of the Greater Iowa Bowling Association and this tournament. And also uh, CFNB Mortgage and Isle Hotel and Casino. I do appreciate everybody listening to us today. I do appreciate everyone uh, supporting our channel uh, over the years, and things have been awesome, and we're just getting started. Thanks to everybody that's subscribed. Uh, if you are subscribed, tomorrow you get a notification in the morning when we go live, which should be around 9.30 a.m. Central Time. We'll have six games for you, and then we'll have our modified bracket to determine who will be the five seed, and then we'll have the five-person stepladder finals. Moving pairs after each game, always tricky, uh, streaming that. But uh, we're up for the challenge. We're looking forward to it. And for all my guests that I had and for Joe Inglekiss and the entire team working the tournament, Joe's family, and to Rich Amy and the entire staff here at Cadillac XBC Lanes in Waterloo, where it is negative two degrees outside. I'm Mike Flanagan from InsideBowling.com. We appreciate you joining us, and we will see you tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m. Good night, everybody.